Welcome to Swish and Flick, an all Potter podcast. Swish and Flick, everyone. The Swish and Flick. Hello and welcome to episode 162 of Swish and Flick. I'm Tiffany. I'm Megan. I'm Katie. And I'm Sarah. And this episode is sponsored by Emily Finley. Thank you, Emily. Thanks, Thanks. Emily. Thank you, Emily. (laughs) Today we will be discussing the second half of chapter 23 of Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, Christmas on the Closed Ward. So make sure that you have read that chapter and you're rocking around the details. I'm I'm sad for you, Tiffany, and not because of that. Before what you didn't we do. begin, <laughs> thought you were trying to trick me. <laughs> Let's go to Megan for some weekly profit news. So again, the weekly profit this week, I just want to give another reminder. Don't forget that Swish and Flick is partnering with Spotify and we are going to be exclusive to Spotify as of October 18th. So make sure that you download the Spotify app and go and follow us there. Don't forget Spotify is free. And um, Swish isn't changing. Literally, like, the podcast isn't changing. The only thing that's changing is where you listen to us. All right. So our next bit of Weekly Profit News is, I think, really cool. They are, unfortunately, this is not available in the U.S., so sad face yeah. to that. But I saw this. They ah. are bottling butterbeer in the U.K., and Mina Lima designed the label. It's really cool. Mm-hmm. They also have matching mm-hmm. cups. And this butterbeer is vegan. So, because it doesn't come with like the foam on top, but they've kind of changed the flavor of the butterbeer to compensate for that. So it's supposed to taste as if you were drinking the one with the foam, but there is no foam and it's vegan. I did see when they poured it. Mm. It It had a lot of foam. Yeah. 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 So um, (laughs) it's it's available at the studio tour. And at Mina Lima's new location in London. Um, and you can order online, but in, in, in the, the UK, UK, correct? Yeah. Only or in maybe the UK. Or maybe like England, oh, England, England is Scotland. <clears throat> yeah, I believe that the, I believe Mina Lima has it on their website. Um, but again, they don't ship to the US. Because um, I, the bottles I, When are I clicked glass. on it, it was also um, like the Studio Tours website as well. Oh, cool. I know that they are like selling it in the gift shop there as well mm-hmm. so so awesome um i will say when i first saw it i thought it was for like um not just the studio like i didn't think it was like the studio tour because i didn't really look at it and then i clicked it and i'm like it's all it's all in like british pounds or whatever and i was like what and i, was like, I oh, wish they, they probably would bring don't it to, to orlando i feel like it will make its way to orlando um i probably so will, that really? people can buy it at the park They'll want it as like a souvenir. I'll right. Still buy butterbeer at the park. So yeah, I. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I feel sure. like it will yeah. come. It's just they're. I bet you they're testing the waters over there before they worry about yeah. importing it. Well, and too, like I know one of our listeners was saying, like it's really frustrating for her because she's vegan. So like they were, they won't give you a butterbeer at the park without the foam on top. They can't. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's so like, it's frustrating for people that are one probably dairy free and two are vegan, so they can't drink it. Yeah. Yeah. Which is. Not nice. Yeah. So that's my real weekly profit news. Exciting, exciting. Nice. It is, it is. Okay, Kate. Yes. I can't see you, unfortunately. Oh, I'm sorry. And I don't know why. I'm staring into your eyes. Oh. <laughs> Are you ready for the ra 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 re ka 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 Ooh. Mix it. <laughs> All right, well, last episode, we actually had an awesome chat with um, Vanessa from the Don't Call Me Crazy podcast about Harry Potter and mental health. So that was awesome. Thank you so much, Vanessa. But the last chapter episode, Harry hides away from all of Grimald Place. He feels contaminated and unwanted. He won't even sleep because he's afraid of attacking somebody. Ugh. He thinks that he's the weapon. Um, Hermione comes to Grimald Place for Christmas, and he's let, she's like, you know what, Harry? No, we're not wallowing. Um, and it's Ginny who breaks through to him. Don't worry, Harry. Your friends and your future wife got your back. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so I, one, have already cried during this episode, but of laughter. And I think that this episode is going to end with me crying tears of sadness. Correct. So 
in order for me to start on a high note, I think Florence is going to read the summary this time because she hasn't come around it often. Like someone just messaged me. They're like, I miss Florence. I was like, yeah, she's, she's been gone. She has been. You know, I think, I think she took a vacation. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) She's the only one. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So I don't like that I said that, but whatever. (laughs) Anywho. (laughs) Anywho, Zs. um, I'm not sure if everyone has heard, but the bird is the word. I mean, it's Christmas time. Christmas time is here. (laughs) <laughs> I had that in my head when I wrote this. <laughs> All right. So Sirius is happier than ever. At least someone is, you know. The house is decorated, and before they know it, they're waking up on Christmas morning to presents by the beds. Yay. I don't know who else gets presents by the bed. I don't wake up with any presents except for, you know, dirty laundry I got to do. <laughs> Percy gets upset, except he doesn't. It's just as Percy upsets and already upset Molly because he's not a nice son. And what else is new? You know, they all go to St. Mungo's to see Mr. Weasley, who, although he isn't a snitch, he got ended, still ended up uh, getting stitches. <laughs> Harry, Ron, Hermione, and Ginny, they all see their old professor. Oh, wait, uh, what's his name again? And uh, they meet Neville and his grandmother there as well. And, you know, what kind of... It's sad. Yeah. It's a lot of sad. But it's Christmas. It's Christmas. So, you know, Florence, I'm great. Thank you, Florence. You're welcome. Thanks, I appreciate Florence. it. Thanks, Florence. We missed you. I feel, like, I feel like Florence is a little bit rusty because she hasn't been around for a little bit. I thought she know? sounded great. Well, she always sounds great. I'm, I'm just fantastic. I almost said a swear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Fill in right. the blank. <laughs> I, I already have. <laughs> so... Harry is so happy that he is not the weapon that Voldemort is after. And it's like the best day ever. They're not the he's not the droids they're looking for? No, he is not the droid <laughs> that they're looking for. Best day ever. <laughs> so he feels like joining in the Christmas cheer now and Sirius is in a very good mood singing. He's singing a song called God rest ye merry hippogriffs. So <clears throat> there was only one line, so I thought that I would write some. You. And I would like to sing it, yes. Ready? We'll see how well we can do singing it together. <laughs> Don't mess this up. I'm going to try, genuinely try. <laughs> this the, is a big tune, moment. It's the to first the tune song of I've God ever rest written. ye merry gentlemen? Yes. Are you, I kind of know it, I think. Well, let's hope. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? A, a one and a two in a three god rest ye merry hippogriffs let nothing you dismay remember rats and weasels upon this christmas day to fill our bellies and our hearts when we all fly away oh snackies of comfort and joy comfort and joy oh snackies of comfort and joy you don't remember him reading just the one line i wrote the rest <laughs> you <did>? <laughs> <laughs> yeah he only sings god rest you merry hippogriffs and then i wrote the rest <laughs> katie, <laughs> thought, katie thought that jk Rowling wrote oh, oh snackies of comfort and joy <laughs> Okay, thank you. Okay. So Harry is even shocked at his own thought to return to Privet Drive for Christmas. And he's so happy that he didn't actually leave. Because if you remember, he was uh, getting ready to walk out the door until Phineas Nigella was like, oh, okay. So Sirius is no longer the sullen host that he was previously. And he is determined that everyone have a great time. And just as much fun, if not more fun, that they would have if they were, you know, celebrating at Hogwarts. Because we know a Hogwarts Christmas is very <clears throat> awesome. It's a very, very, very nice time. <laughs> <laughs> Sirius is cleaning and decorating with their help all up <clears throat> until the day of Christmas Eve. And the house was barely recognizable. And I said, I want to see this. I'm kidding. I have a... S- no pun intended. A serious question to ask everyone. Oh, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. All right. Does this get anybody <laughs> else in the mood to decorate for Christmas, even though it's I know it's September 10th when we're recording this? Oh, yeah. Like, I'm I am in oh, the Christmas no. spirit after singing God Rest You Merry Hippogriffs. <laughs> Glad I could do that for you. <laughs> oh, 
Uh, no, because I just decorated for Halloween. <laughs> we haven't really decorated. We got some stuff. Um, oh, we're not going to decorate probably till mm, next weekend. Yeah. Closer to October. Not that I'm judging <clears throat> people. Decorate whenever you want. So would you like to hear what uh, number 12 Grimmauld Place looks like? As a matter of fact, yes. no. Oh, so the tarnished chandeliers, this is a quote, <laughs> were no longer hung with cobwebs, but with garlands of holly and gold Ooh. and silver streamers. Magical snow glittered in heaps over the threadbare carpet. So there's just like snow hanging around. <laughs> a, a great Christmas tree obtained by Mundungus and decorated with live fairies blocked oh. Sirius's family tree from view. I'm pr- pretty sure that was strategic. And even the stuffed heads of the elves on the wall wore Father Christmas hats and beards. How oh festive. God. Merry That's- Christmas, everyone. <laughs> It's Happy Christmas. It said Mary in the book. Um, that's the the book art. The chapter art is um, mm-hmm. an a house elf. Because mm-hmm. I wanted to see if it was something else. And I, I don't remember what I wanted to look at. And I was like, oh, it's the actual house elf wearing a hat. Very cool. I, I bought, so speaking of Christmas hats, <laughs> I bought like a fake mouse to put on our mantelpiece, like a one that's like stands and it's like made out of like straw or something. It's got a basket and has a little baby mouse in it. And I told my mom, like, we could make, like, little Santa hats for it. It could be up all year round. She turned around and didn't even acknowledge that I said it. <laughs> She's like, no. Whoa. Whoa. Merry Christmas. Right. <laughs> Harry <filthy> woke. animal. <laughs> you filthy muggle. Uh, true. Harry woke up on Christmas, and there was a stack of presents at the foot of his bed. And I said, I wonder if there's a spell you can put on a present for it to be delivered at a correct like certain time probably because cool. i like that so like say you go and hide some presents and you just do like you cast some spells like gifto recibio <laughs> 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 and then you say a time and then you say a person now, who it's for i do have a question for people like in england really like is that what father christmas does does he put because i'm not used at to that at the foot of your bed yeah, yeah I'm so used to i guess putting them underneath my christmas yeah tree. if you don't know I'm just curious. Our what, gifts does he, what does he do with you guys? Are from Santa under the Christmas tree. Yeah, Father Christmas and Santa are the same person. I know. I feel like our, my kids are from Santa. No, I'm just saying for our American listeners and for our listeners abroad, they're the same thing, interchangeable. Yes. Yeah. So where does where does he put your presents? I'd like to know. Tell us. So. In true Ron style, he's already halfway <laughs> through opening all of his. And I find it funny that he just like doesn't wait for Harry to wake up. He just starts going through gifts. <laughs> so Ron. And Ron thought that he got a pretty good haul this year with the presents. And he thanked Harry for the broom compass, which I think is pretty cool. But I don't think we ever really hear about it again. Did you look it up to see what that was? It's a compass that goes on your broom. <laughs> ah, thank you. I was like, what's a broom compass? What does it do? Tells you the direction to fly. Where's north? <laughs> and he's really not so into the present that Hermione got him, which was a homework planner. Like, and I would have enjoyed oh, a I homework would not. planner. I, I buy a planner every year. I think both of her... I gotta say i'm not she super gets, impressed with her gifts she issues. gifts gets gifts for other people that she would like herself well, well don't that's do not that. always <laughs> true because she gets but hairy later like a broom on, servicing kit that's pretty and awesome even, even before yeah i was gonna say even before she's given them better gifts yeah. well maybe she thinks that they need to improve their studies here, maybe okay, she just regardless thinks they're if too she thinks they do. For no, I'm I'm just saying I think that this time she got a gift for herself, like got, got a gift for them that she herself would enjoy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Harry goes through his presents and he finds the one with Hermione's handwriting on it, and it seems like she gave Harry the same thing that she gave to Ron. Quote, do it today or later you'll pay. I feel like it would be more nasally, like um do it today or later you'll play like <laughs> that was the really lady the, the voice that you do that's like the like travel agent kind of person or like the tour guide that's what i do and to your left <laughs> <laughs> well why don't you say do it? it today or ladle your pay what <laughs> ladle <laughs> we're making soup <laughs> that's what happens when you don't use her for a long time that's true the, the do words it to today go. or later you'll pay Oh, like, I feel like that's the voice that would say something when you, like, open it up. <laughs> I like it. 
Uh, Harry also got presents from Lupin and Sirius. They gave him books that would be great for defense against the dark arts, quote, entitled Practical Defensive Magic and Its Uses Against the Dark Arts, which had a superb moving color illustration of all of the counter jinxes and hexes that it described. I think this is a phenomenal teacher for marauders to give Harry. You know what I mean? Because they're like helping him stick it to the man, but in such like a parent way kind of way. thing. We're like, yeah. here's a book that you can use these things yes. I to why learn. Lupin never like gave Harry presents before now. Maybe he couldn't afford them. Yeah, true. I, yeah, and I think yeah. part of it too is like it's he just doesn't feel like he is deserving. Yeah, of he never giving. had a he never had a job really until. Well, we don't really actually know what he was doing before he got offered the Defense Against the Dark Arts. I like to think that he worked at Mm -hmm. the Hog's Head. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I think he probably didn't because when he was his teacher, which was the last time they really encountered each other, he was like his teacher. That was like it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, True. Really, like I wasn't like their best friend. So maybe he just didn't feel comfortable. That's going to be so tough for him. When I think about stuff like that, it makes me want to oh, cry a I, lot. I'll, after I finish my part, I'll tell you why I was crying about Lupin just a few days ago, actually. Okay. Um, Harry flipped through this, through the first volume, and he was already planning on um, Dumbledore army meetings around it. And I said, he's such a teacher. He such a should teacher. have been a teacher. I mean, he's. we don't know what happened after... The curse of the child was over. I know, it over. just makes me so mad that, like, I just don't, uh, I just can am we just not give a, a hand fan to teachers? of him becoming yeah, right Go ahead. a wizard Clap cop. for me. Clap for me. Clap that's, for me. That's just Sarah clapping for teachers all alone. Because <laughs> the, the other people I want people podcast. clapping wherever you're listening, except if you're driving. I want him to be a full-time <laughs> teacher, not just a visiting teacher. <laughs> Full time professor at Hogwarts. Defense against the dark arts. Defense. Defense. Oh. Defense. Defense. Haggard sent Harry a furry brown wallet which had fangs, <laughs> which were supposed to be the anti theft device, but in a crazy turn of events, Harry couldn't get anything into the wallet because of the fangs, because it kept trying to rip his fingers off. I wonder if you just stroke the spine. Perhaps. Right? Or, like, I'm talk sure nice there was to something. Be like, hey, you there you was a trick to it. A little treat, and then it'll open for you. You could oh, say, like, hey, my cute. little money grabber, let open your mouth. Let me put some money in you. Yeah. <laughs> Get it? Because it's, like, grabbing money because it's a wallet. I just like the way you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> and then this next thing I would really like. Tonks gave him a working model of a firebolt, which would zoom around the room, and Harry wished he had his real one. But then we know that the toad had all of his stuff locked up for life. <laughs> Maybe this is why he never went into professional Quidditch play. Because he could sorry. play ever again. Umber, show me I'm not allowed to play. I love and that Tonks gave him a gift. Yeah. It's me really too. sweet. It's really, really sweet. Because they haven't, they, you know. I mean, very Don't briefly, really know like each they, other that well. Yeah. yeah. She's just a sweetie. And then Ron gave him an enormous box of Bertie Bots, every flavor beans. You know, really George cool. swears he got a bogey flavor. It, it, it's it's kind of. I would I mean, have preferred an enormous box of chocolate frogs, if I'm being honest. Mm-hmm. I wonder if frogs are more expensive. You could probably yeah, because you know I mean? they're more delicious. They got the cards. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Weasley gave him um, a hand knitted jumper and some mince pies. And I said, well, what's a mince pie? You've never heard of a minced pie? I have, but I didn't really know what it meant. Mm. Um, it sounds like something I would not like to eat. So there's a recipe. But on... maybe we should make those for Swishmas yes, whenever that occurs. Fun. Well, let me read this and see if I actually want it. Isn't well, it I think we're gonna. I think we're going to make it anyways oh, just to say we've had it. So bbcgoodfood.com is a thing, if you didn't know. Uh, prep time is 45 minutes. It's not that long. Do you think they have a bbcbadfood.com? Prep time is Probably. 15. I can't stand your face. <laughs> <laughs> One large jar of minced meat. It's not meat. Why does it called meat? It's like, isn't it like raisins and nuts? It's just like the I don't meat know. Pie. It's yeah. a hyperlink. Yeah. I'm gonna click it. All right. 
Sarah, it's read not me. Read some of those ingredients for me, and I'm going to look at this. this. It's, so it's one large jar of minced meat, which is about 60, nope, it says 600 grams, two satsumas segmented, <laughs> one apple finely chopped, the zest of one lemon, some um, icing sugar for dusting, which if you're an American, that's um, powdered sugar, I believe. Ah, that's how you make icing and then for the pastry so they they measure everything we're like or like in grams where we use like cups and stuff in america i think not i think i know (laughs) you know where you are 375 grams of plain flour 260 grams of unsalted butter softened 125 grams of caster sugar which is just regular sugar plus extra for sprinkling i believe caster sugar is extra i could totally be lying um and then one large egg plus one beaten egg for glazing all right, so minced meat is fruity spiced mixture used to fill mince pies. Uh, let's look at the actual ingredients here. I think it's like apples. Oh, raisins. it says it's an ancient mixture of dried fruits, ground almonds and spices, sugar and fat, almost certainly brought back to England from the Middle East by crusaders. Interesting. Cool. All right, well, give me some... So we'll we'll try it. I don't think I'll like it, um, if I'm being honest. But I'm also not like a super into my desserts and stuff. Because mm. um, we've made well, we we didn't make this, I but the very the first mince. year we did part like the oh, very first saying... time we did it, we did um, the oh, Christmas pudding that I just bought, mm-hmm. and then set it on fire and almost set my life on fire, um, and then was told that you did it wrong and i was like i'm not surprised <laughs> and then for our halloween party we had i did a treacle tart which some people thought was all right and some people did not think it was all right i don't remember I don't i'm, gonna, it just volunteer. Not my cup I'm of tea. gonna volunteer to make the mince pies i want i am ex- don't make, make that. that many no i won't but maybe i'll do little mi- like little mini ones it's a good idea like you would have an extra tea you know like picture the ones that jimmy like feeds Harry. <laughs> <laughs> Should we recreate the scene? Yeah. I don't like that. Yeah. I don't we can, like we can that. recreate it with um <laughs> Tiffany and uh Katie. <laughs> yes. Tiffany's Harry Potter. <laughs> I'm always Harry. Um Dobby gave Harry a quote truly dreadful painting that Harry suspected had been done by the elf himself. Oh. And I have a petition for our listeners. Please someone Paint what you think Dobby made for Harry and send us a picture. It so it is you... actual portrait of Harry done by Dobby. It makes me think of Aristocats when they paint Edgar. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Oh, so I then there is show. a loud crack and the twins were there to wish them a Merry Christmas and then told them not to go downstairs for a little bit because Molly is crying again. Percy had sent back his Christmas gift and he didn't even bother to put a note with it. And I said, ugh, this is heartbreaking. Yes. But we all know that Percy's going through it. Fred and George really tried to comfort her because Percy hasn't even tried to see Arthur since the attack. But they tried to comfort her in a way that only the twins really could. So they, quote, told her Percy's nothing more than a humongous pile of rat droppings. (laughs) Didn't work, said George, (laughs) helping himself to a chocolate frog. So Lupin took over. Best let him cheer her up before we go down for breakfast, I reckon. And then Fred notices the portrait of Harry and said that it looked like a gibbon with two black eyes and if you don't know what a gibbon is i looked it up as well it's a tiny little monkey because i also didn't know what it was i don't know how tiny i just say everything's tiny they're I say pretty small. tiny and he's like 100 pounds they're pretty small but it is considered to be a small ape species found in the tropical forest of southeast asia and i don't want you advertisement um yeah no they have a human like build no tail Gibbons seem to lack higher cognitive abilities and self-awareness, so they're more monkey-like rather than human-like. Uh, they're not they're not bad looking. I'm not a real big fan of monkeys. I really don't like monkeys. <gasps> oh my god! I don't I don't I love monkeys. Hey, I don't like not Sorry. like monkeys, but I'm not the biggest fan. I would like to look at a giraffe uh-huh. over a monkey. Tigers. Um, I think monkeys just like look. <laughs> 
so human like I don't know how to handle them yeah I think that that's partially it I just am not I'm just not a fan (laughs) oh my (laughs) my god these monkey gifts so George says it's Harry because he's like, oh, look, it's Harry because that was also written on the back of the painting. And then Fred says, good likeness. And this <laughs> cracks me up. I love it so much. So he says it with like a little like smirk. And so Harry throws his new homework diary <laughs> at him. And I said, I love, love, love the kids being kids. Yes. Yeah. This book is so heavy. And the time in the wizarding world is so heavy. <laughs> thank you for you thank you for dropping that picture I while thought, I'm talking about this. I thought that you meant that the book that Harry was holding was heavy. No, it I might. I was be. like, wait, how do you know? Does it say it's heavy? I look great, in that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so the diary spoke up happily because it opened after Harry threw it at him, and it says, "Do it in the voice." If you dotted the I's and crossed the T's, then you may do whatever you please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so they get dressed as they heard people in the house start to wish each other Merry Christmas. And then they saw Hermione on their way down the stairs. And she thanked Harry for the new book, New Theory of Numerology. And I think that is a great trivia question to ask people. That is a really good Harry trivia get question. Harry get Hermione? Um, and Ron got her perfume. Now, quick, <laughs> what do you think the scent is? Shoelaces. Mm. <laughs> well, she says, "Does she it's say it's like unusual, flowery, or something?" I bet it smells like the Chamber of Secrets. Oh, it smells like that's Rexford. Why, that's I was gonna say patchouli. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, oh yeah, make it out. Um, it smells like the future. <laughs> Ron sees that Hermione has a package in her hand and he asks her who that's for and she tells him creature and Ron warns her that it better not be close. He already knows creature being that person that knows too much and I said foreshadowing. Lots of foreshadowing. So does it matter that he knows too much and isn't free though? Nope. Nope. Did we read that part already? Where like Sirius can't find creature. Yeah. Um, no. Well, it's literally in the... about to talk oh, about it. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I was like, it's in this section. Uh, so, <laughs> um, so Hermione said, "No, it is not clothes. It's just a patchwork quilt to brighten up his room." Aww. Um. Do you think she made it? I was just thinking that. Yes, and I want her to make me one. I have too many t-shirts. Make me a quilt. Yeah, I think it's cute. So, um, his bedroom. Oh, creature's poor (laughs) itty-bitty little bedroom. Um, It's a cupboard. It's a cupboard. Harry can relate. I was going to ask me. (laughs) (laughs) So, apparently, he sleeps under the boiler in that cupboard off the kitchen. Which, yes, is very it's warm and cozy. It's quite hairy, yes. So, um, Mrs. Weasley is the only person in the basement when they arrive, and she sounded like she had a head cold when she wished them a Merry Christmas. And I just said, oh, Poor thing. Percy. It just, mm. I understand what he's going through. It just is difficult, especially because of like how focused Molly is on family. Didn't he, like, not even yeah. ask well, about I, it's, his dad? He ne- yeah, he Correct, is not seen which is shocking Arthur. to me that, like, your dad almost died and you didn't even ask about him. Like, yeah. God forbid he did die. You probably because, like, there are situations where, like, families are her- terrible and, like, you might not regret it, um, which in that situation I get. But, like, in this, like, you're just fighting over a government, basically, and your dad almost dies. And then you could would you be able to live with yourself for the rest of your life? Hey, yo. I don't know, ma'am. <sighs> Yeah, that would be really difficult. He learns this lesson, though, like at the end of the series. Unfortunately. Yeah. Listen, everybody has a middle, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I just I feel bad for the Weasleys and not Percy. I definitely feel I feel for Molly at this moment. Like, yeah, she it's just, tough, especially around the holidays. Yeah. The fact that he didn't ask about Arthur, the fact that it's Christmas, the fact that he didn't even accept the sweater that she made him like. 
Yeah. She clearly is is trying to reach out and he's just not being responsive. Um but he needs his space right now, so I'm just glad that he comes around. Um Yeah. But not yet. Yeah. Um so this is Creature's bedroom, said Ron, strolling over to a dingy door in the corner opposite the pantry, which Harry had never seen open. Yes, said Hermione, now sounding a little nervous. Uh, I think we'd better knock. And Ron knocked. So Creature didn't answer, um, and they decided to just go ahead and open the door. And I wanted to read the description of his little day. Yes. Yeah. Um. Harry peered inside. Most of the cupboard was taken up with a very large and old-fashioned boiler. But in the foot's space underneath the pipes, Creature had made himself something that looked like a nest. A jumble of assorted rags and smelly old blankets were piled on the floor, and the small dent in the middle of it showed where Creature curled up to sleep every night. Here and there among the material were stale bread crusts and moldy old bits of cheese. In a far corner glinted small objects and coins that Harry guessed Creature had saved. Magpie-like. Correct. What does that mean? I'll look. I'll look it up. That's a bird. So I think the bird picks up like things. Oh, Um, From Sirius's purge of the house. And he had also managed to retrieve the silver framed family photographs that Sirius had thrown away over the summer. Their glass might be shattered, but still the little black and white people inside them peered haughtily up at him, including, he felt a little jolt in his stomach, the dark, heavy-lidded woman whose trial he had witnessed in Dumbledore's Pensieve, Bellatrix Lestrange. Can you Lestrange. say it correctly? Pensieve. Thank you. Bellatrix Pensieve. Lestrange. By the looks of it, hers was Creature's favorite photograph. He had placed it on the floor of all the others and had mended the glass clumsily with spello tape. Is that foreshadowing? I wonder what we're going to talk about her. I wonder what those little <sighs> glittery trinkets are. Hmm. Hmm. I bet you. I bet you it's there hmm. right now. I it, bet you it's the macaroni uh, for sure there right now. Macaroni uh, glitter art. It's I do. the it's whole Sirius and Regulus made for the mother, and maybe it's the only. It's Regulus. It's because she threw Sirius's away because she didn't want his, uh, you know, glittery uh, noodle art. You are a strange bird, and you have my pity. Farewell. <laughs> um, uh, no, the the locket has to be there right now. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I just wonder. I don't think Mundugus snakes it until later. I just wonder why Harry didn't until feel it dies. his in his time. At Could Grimald. it be a plot hole? Feel it? I don't. Well, here's the thing. I wonder if he has to be like aware of what he's doing. He, you know what I mean? When, like, when he when they felt those feelings, it was because they were actually wearing, wearing the it. locket. Yeah. They didn't feel anything when it was somebody else's turn um, when they were camping. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Ron even says True. that, mm-hmm. um, you know, he felt miserable when he was wearing it. And then when he took it off, he felt so much better. And by the time that he started to feel himself again, it was his turn again. That's some lingering. That's not what nastiness. she's talking about, though. Well, no, she's it, talking about no, Harry feeling it. Like Harry, I, is that what you mean? Like, like he kind of sense the other. There. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he doesn't, I guess, he doesn't I mean, sense them. He he sensed. No, he That's does. A movieism. Is it? Uh, yes. He doesn't sense. How does he know there. it's the cup when he's a million or being? He germinoed. sees. He sees the memory of the cup, and Dumbledore says That's that it's I'm probably saying. the cup. The Gemini. When I'm saying when he's physically getting it, and there's the cups everywhere. How does he know which he, cup? He is never the cup? lets go of it. He. Mm-hmm. I just literally just listened to this today. That's some. That's some Bob Shorts. It I don't scalds his <laughs> skin, and as as he says, cups are just Ooh, pouring hot. out of his hand <laughs> as he's holding, and it's scalding cups, his cups, skin. Cups, 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 cups. Don't come Everybody. at me with seven. Cups, cups, cups. I'm almost cups, done with cups, it. Cups. Again. Don't come at me with seven. <laughs> um, <sighs> okay, so yeah, I guess that's me being inundated with the movies. I kind of thought it that is. It is, but we have he to. He felt them, you know. Yeah. This is why we're doing part of this. <laughs> and to also <laughs> laugh. The only reason we're Vinny doing. Vinny says in the books, Harry concentrates to be able to feel a tiny heart inside the locket. That's creeptastic. So and I, I don't guess it's because that. he doesn't know that there's anything for him to concentrate on at this point, and that's why he's not. It also throbs against his chest. Yeah. Ugh. Stop it. I'm just saying. Ugh. He also has a scar from it now. <sighs> well, yeah, he's used to scars. To match his other scars. 
How many scars has Voldemort given him? Three? No. Does he get a scar in his arm? He wrote stars. From the graveyard? Stars from the dagger? Uh, perhaps. I don't know. Oh, All right. Jimmy drew stars around his scars. <laughs> That's the Taylor Hashtag Swift shoelaces. Who has okay. that on there? Bingo. <laughs> Sarah. <laughs> K. <laughs> All right. Continue. Continue. All right. B-I-N-G-O. So Hermione leaves his present in the middle of his bed. And then Sirius... I, I got confused because, like, does Sirius just, like, appear? I guess he does. But Sirius is just like, has anyone seen Creature lately? Um, and nobody has. So I said, hmm. So is this one Creature has been at Mistress Lestrange's? It For is. For sure. Because it he's is. been gone four days. Because yeah. he comes, like, he comes back, but doesn't. nobody knows that he comes back. And he's in a yeah. whole different kind of a mood. Yeah. I'm in a mood. He's in a mood. Serious thought that he didn't respond because he has to respond. You know what I mean? I don't think Sirius really think. Yeah. Yeah. Wait. Yelled him. Yeah, he yells for him. Yeah. Hmm. And he's like, "Where's that elf gone?" or something like this. And then he said, "Oh, he's probably." um, I never, I never read that as him calling for him. That's why I'm saying that. He says he's like he's probably snogging some of his dad's like old underwear or something it's really weird whatever he said <laughs> oh, God. uh all right all right back to the chapter <laughs> so Sirius looks slightly disconcerted for a moment i'll look for him later i expect i'll find him upstairs crying his eyes out over my mother's old bloomers or something of course he might have crawled into the airing cupboard and died but i mustn't get my hopes up Fred, George, and Ron laughed. Hermione, however, looked reproachful. Yes. Um, when did when did we say he called him though? Because he doesn't call him right in this section. Th- does he call him earlier in the chapter? I don't. I know. think he calls him whenever he's gonna go make breakfast when they come in. Like, it might be the day before. Remember? I don't know like, if that's yeah, still this chapter. And no, that, yeah, that is yes. that last chapter. Because he doesn't. Ch- we'll find it. Keep looking. I really can't see um, in the dark. So, <laughs> first of all, that's just not something that you should say. Um, like I, this, oh. like this right here is biting serious in his butt. It's gonna like yeah. This yeah. right now is just um, and it's literally such a hard pill for Harry to swallow like later on yeah. granted it's super fresh that Sirius has died and you don't really want to think about like people's not so desirable traits after they've passed you know what I mean yeah. well, especially someone like he's looked and up he to. was like so you're saying Sirius deserved to die but he's like no but we need to like use it as like one of the most like horrible learning experiences mm-hmm. you can you know yeah. with treating other people other creatures with respect and kindness mm-hmm. yeah for it's sure just, it's yeah. it's and just so sad it's just, it really is it's it's something hard to think of after something so horrible happened but at the end of the day yeah. like Sirius is Sirius is digging his own grave right here and like that's yeah. just really dark and deep and sad to think about but he genuinely is um, and that's something that he definitely had ingrained in him and that's something that was clearly he never unlearned those traits would you say he's a product of his environment i would absolutely indeed say that this is the nurture part that we are saying and like it it goes back to you know everybody good or bad also has good and bad in them you know what i mean so like there are terrible people in the world that like literally his own lesson he was telling good things and then there's wonderful people that have done things that aren't nice aren't good you know what i mean yeah Um, we all have light and dark or something people aren't and you just have to like i mean it's good sometimes it's not easy to do the good thing the right thing um but you always got to choose to do the next right thing isn't that what uh pop patrol yeah Um, papa also he said a lot of things that he should have taken his own advice on like when he tells her you can't if you want to know uh how or who a man truly is you know you gotta see now how he treats his equals Mm -hmm. and what does he do 
Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. You kind of warning Harry about. Iggy, you're in the Iggy appearance, bingo. I like what Sydney <laughs> just said in the chat. She said, I think Sirius also was displacing a lot of his anger and frustration over the only thing he had control over, which was creature. Yeah. Absolutely. Because, um, um, I mean, that's a that's a hard situation for him to be in. Because think about it. He did 12 years in Azkaban. And then he was on the run for how long? Like a year and a half? Yeah. Two years almost. And then he's confined to be alone in the house where, like, he has nothing but terrible memories. Yeah. It's Chris basically like that. he never leaves. Reminding him jail. of everything he mm-hmm. hated about mm-hmm. his youth, his family. Mm-hmm. Good point. Very good point. And really, like, you need, like, he needed some more social interaction. Um, and one thing that we've talked about a lot in this podcast, and really, if you listen to the previous episode, we're going to talk about, like, mental health in the wizarding world. Like, they don't, mm-hmm. as far as we see, they don't deal with that. And, I mean, really, at the, at the time that these were written, um, it wasn't, mental health is not talked about like it is now. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Where it's more socially acceptable now to talk about people going to therapy and people having conversations about Mm -hmm. depression, anxiety, you know, other mental issues, especially in 2020 when, you know, the whole quarantine thing happened and it blew everybody's norm out the window. And that's going to throw you for a loop anyways, you know? Um, And it's not, it's not easy, you know? And so Mm -hmm. him going through all these things, like he's not at his mentally best health and he probably hasn't been for a very long time because he went from being a student in Hogwarts that already has a rough family life who they don't, you know what I mean? They don't get along at all. Then there's a war happening and then his friends are immediately involved Then his friends die. Um, You know what I mean? He's had Mm -hmm. a rough, no pun intended, rough life. Yeah. So Harry, before Sirius looks like disconcerted for a moment, that's when Harry says, um... That's when Harry, like, says something like, he could leave. Like, it, like, because Sirius says something mm-hmm. like, no, he, like, he can't. He can't do that. Oh, um, yeah. And Harry's like, actually, he can. Like, Dobby left the Malfoys to warn me. Um, and that's when Sirius is, like, kind of, he's kind of like, oh. And then he's like, ah, I'm sure that it's fine. Um, you know, it's interesting, though, that, like, so Sirius... He's a pureblood. So is Lucius. And they both underestimate their house elves. Pardon me. What's his name? Luscious. Mm. He's got Mm. those luscious golden locks. (sighs) My (sighs) name's Lucius and I have luscious locks. (laughs) (laughs) I used to have a house elf named Dobby who would comb and wash my hair every day. You are not okay. (laughs) I miss him and his delicate hands. (laughs) Is Luscious Talk a bingo square? Good lord. If you don't know what we're talking about, our Discord patrons are uh, made bingo cards for the things that we say, and they play bingo now because they're amazing. <laughs> uh, um, so they had their Christmas lunch um, after this little convo about Creature and had planned to go and see... Arthur after lunch and they were going to be escorted by Mad-Eye and Lupin and Mundungus was going to drive them. They were able to get a borrowed car from the ministry since the underground (laughs) doesn't run on Christmas day. Um, And I just wanted to read the description of Zikar. I don't think they borrowed it from the ministry. Mundungus got it. No, that's a lie. This is true. I'm sorry. Are you sure? (laughs) I, yeah, did I, I just ask? Wait, wait, wait. What did you ask? Is this three? <laughs> did I just ask myself? <laughs> what did you, did you ask if this was prisoner? I just asked myself, I just what did, asked myself a question, but I also don't remember what I just asked myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, good thing it's recorded. <sighs> oh, yes. They did oh. borrow the car from the ministry. At least that's what it says in the book. So <laughs> I would assume that that's what happened. <laughs> Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. But the car, which Harry doubted very much. No, no, no. It says Mondungus turned up in time for Christmas pudding and a trifle and had managed to, quote, borrow uh, a car for the occasion. I was uh, saying, like, they didn't get one from the ministry. So he stole a car. Interesting. Mm, okay, he sorry. With I read the intention that wrong. of giving it back. So he stole a car. <laughs> That's right. They can't trust the ministry. Duh. What book am I reading? Okay. They borrowed a car. 
Mundungus did. The car, which Harry doubted very much had been taken with the knowledge or consent of its owner. <laughs> I literally put yeah. this in my notes. What is wrong with me? Anyway. <laughs> had had a similar enlarging spell put upon it as the Weasley's old Ford Anglia did. Although normally proportioned outside, ten people with Mundungus driving were able to fit into it quite comfortably. Um, That's crazy. There was no... What kind of car do you think it was? I would guess a like... clown car? A Buick. <laughs> Because they're, like, big. <laughs> All I can think about is those new Buick commercials. Oh. It's a Buick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, because they're Buick? like, I can't believe it's a Buick. I can't believe it's not about it. I was going to say the same thing, Katie. <laughs> I just got so excited. It's gee. <laughs> it's gee. <gay. laughs> it's a gay car. So <laughs> they got there pretty quick. The journey was quick because there was hardly any traffic on the holiday. Um, and when they walked in to, like, Dung, like, let them off, and they went over to the creepy mannequin head and were let inside, and the reception area looked pleasantly festive. The crystal orbs that illuminated St. Mungo's had been turned to red and gold so that they became gigantic, glowing Christmas baubles. Um... Holly hung around every doorway and shining white Christmas trees covered in magical snow and icicles glittered in every corner, each topped with a gleaming gold star. It was less crowded. You guys are doing really bad with colors. That's because I'm not listening to you. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was less crowded than the last time they had been there, although halfway across the room, Harry found himself shunted aside by a witch with a walnut jammed up her left nostril. And the, the blonde witch behind the desk says, family argument, eh? You're the third ah. I've seen today. Spell damage for the floor. So do you think they, like, spelled the walnut to go in? They or just, spelled if the there's walnut. there's a spell to, like, point it at someone, it's like, nose nut. I don't know. I don't know. Nose, nose nut. nut? I don't know. Is that a spell? Nose-o-nutto. Maybe they're just trying to use a nutcracker and it flung out. Smash this witch in the nose. <laughs> maybe they wanted to use the, the why, maybe they wanted to use her <laughs> as a nutcracker. Walnut wassy. Oh, walnut wassy. Yes, love I love that. that. Katie, it's your turn. Okay. It's yellow. Uh, four words. Yellow, yellow. Read from chapters, but some of them. I just kind of can't. do as well. But what? you know what? Sometimes you just can't summarize something, you know? Yeah, yeah or like it's me fine. summarizing it just like doesn't, doesn't do, do it justice. justice. So you do you, boo. Deal with it. Okay, so they all go to see Mr. Weasley. They find him propped up in bed. Uh, he just finished his turkey dinner, and he looks a little sheepish. Uh, so Bleh. when Mrs. Weasley comes in, she's like, is everything all right? And he says, fine, a little too heartily. Uh, and then he's like, have you seen Healer Smithwick? And she's like, no. Why? Because now Mama Weasley, she's suspicious. Uh, but Mr. Weasley's like, oh, nothing. Don't, Don't be suspicious. <laughs> Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> One day that was stuck in my head. Oh, it was terrible. Oh, God. Um, so Mr. Weasley waves off. Besides, he's super stoked over Harry's Christmas present, which is fuse wire and screwdrivers. And he literally says, oh, Harry. This is absolutely wonderful. And he shakes Harry's hand to thank him, which gives Mrs. Weasley a little look under his nightshirt where his bandages are. And she's like, why? Why are these changed a day early? And he looks frightened. Well, <laughs> frightened. <laughs> and he pulls his covers up higher on his chest and he's like, no, 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 it's nothing. I can see him going. I know, I know. And he deflated under her piercing gaze. <laughs> yes, Tiffany. So about the gift, I wonder if every summer Harry just, when he gets to Privet Drive, just walks into the garage, <laughs> scoops some uh. stuff into his truck, and he's like, I'll save this for Christmas. <laughs> That's Because, like, where are you going to get that? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Can't send owls to muggle stores. Just pick me up uh, Phillips and uh... <laughs> so from the book. Uh, Mr. Weasley. Well, now don't get upset, Molly, but Augustus Pye had an idea. He's the trainee healer, you know, lovely young chap and very interested in, uh, in uh, complementary medicine. I mean, some of those old <laughs> muggle remedies. Well, they're called stitches, Molly, and they work very well on, on muggle wounds. 
And Mrs. Weasley let out an ominous noise somewhere between a shriek and a snarl. We all want to go around the table and uh, give our own shriek Wait, snarl. I just want to put in my two cents about Mrs. Weasley. This, again, shows a little bit of her prejudice against, that's, like, that's not how you say that word, against muggles. Because, like, stitches work. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're a snitch, you're certainly gonna get some. But like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Muggle medicine is pretty fantastic. Well, right. Hermione sticks up for it. Yeah. She does. <laughs> I love. I was like, uh, yeah, whatever. Katie, you go first. What a shriek snarl? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it a shriek and then a snarl? Just. I did it backwards. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a Katie thing to do is to do it backwards. <laughs> Good night. Uh, would you like to go? Oh, gosh. Um, yeah. uh, Where was the shriek? It was the ah. Uh. Oh, man, Maggie. Uh, there <laughs> they... <laughs> <laughs> All right, where's my other shrieks now? So Let's go. Funny. Tiffany. I forgot to snarl. It was like a snarl gasp. Um, All right, so you want to do your shriek snarl again, Tiffany? I'm trying to think of how to do it. There is no right way. There is no right way. Because what? (laughs) I met you, but you're still sexy, Arthur. (laughs) I feel like she would be like... (laughs) <laughs> and then die. <sighs> you know what I mean? Like that's how you would like, <gasps> like <sighs> mm-hmm. that would be my I like interpretation. That. I think of, like, Sarah a real probably life. nailed it the best as far as like actual accuracy. <laughs> um, that's what I was going for. Good. This picture popped up on my computer. Okay, now I can get rid of it. Me as the seven Harrys. <laughs> so, uh, Remus gets up and heads over to the werewolf that we know is in the room with Mr. Weasley. And Bill mutters In the about, room where it happens? Yeah. Uh, Bill mutters mm-hmm. about a cup of tea, mm-hmm. and Fred and George very quickly leap up to join him. And then Mrs. Weasley continues. Do you mean to tell me, said Mrs. Weasley, her voice growing louder with every word, and apparently unaware that her fellow visitors were scurrying for cover, <laughs> that you have been messing about with muggle remedies? Not messing about, Molly dear, said Mr. Weasley imploringly. It was just, just something Pi and I thought we'd try. Only, most unfortunately, well, with these kinds of wounds, it doesn't seem to work as well as we hope. Meaning? Well, I don't know whether you know what, what stitches are. <laughs> She's like, <laughs> it sounds as though you're trying to sew your skin back together, <laughs> said Mrs. Weasley with a snort of mirthless laughter. But even you, Arthur, wouldn't be that stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Arthur. And Harry was like, "Oh yeah, you know, I really fancy a cup of tea too." And Hermione, Ron, and Ginny are like, "Yep, coming with you." Katie, I think you're fancying a cup of tea over in the Discord. <laughs> what is that? It's a Hagrid teacup. It yes! is a Hagrid teacup. A bucket of mud. What? A bucket of mud? Is that what you just said? A bucket of mud. <laughs> a bucket of mud. We want a bucket of mugs, yeah. Um. So, as the door swung closed behind them, Mrs. Weasley shrieked, "What do you mean? That's the general idea." <laughs> <laughs> so Hermione does give Mrs. Weasley some credit because stitches do work good for muggle wounds, but she's guessing that the venom from the snake dis- dissolves them or something. So they head to the fifth floor and they cast more portraits of healers and they keep shouting out diagnoses. Is that the right way to say that? Diagnoses? Diagnoses? For whatever yeah, reason. Yeah, that's correct. And one of them told Ron that he has spattergroid because of his freckles. <laughs> Isn't that what they say he has um, in book seven when he like... This Ooh. is a huge foreshadow. This is what I was talking about the other day, Megan, if you remember me saying... Yeah. You remember me saying that? Yeah. So this is huge foreshadowing for that. Very good, Sasa. You're welcome. So, yeah. It's so great. It's awesome. All the things, like, ever. Ron has like, to be sick with spattergroit at the burrow, and they actually do go and check, we find out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he's the ghoul in the pajamas. <laughs> the ghoul in the pajamas. It sounds like a Hiding in the attic. 
it does Ooh, someone write should it. write uh, <laughs> genius <laughs> i wrote a kid's book before i have part of two written i mean you have the only one i've written true I've written a song. <laughs> <laughs> so Katie. a song that was so convincing I didn't know you wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they reach the fourth floor, which is spell damage, like in the stairwell, and Harry stops. A man with wavy blonde hair, bright blue eyes, and a broad vacant smiley with smile with a dazzling white teeth was looking at them with his nose pressed against the glass. <laughs> <laughs> it's Lockhart, which when I read this for the first time, I was like, whoa, this is cool. Not even a fan of Lockhart, but it was just really cool to see him after. And like, it really doesn't add to the story except to bring us to like what Sarah's going to talk about. So that's cool. But I'm glad she just like threw something in there. Mm -hmm. um, and suddenly Hermione sounded breathless. Ooh. Do you still Ooh. like Lila? So their ex I like you, Hermione. <laughs> their ex defense against the dark arts teacher pushes open the doors. Is I don't like along. ex. What? Can you say former defense Previous. against the dark arts former. teacher? You're right. He does still like lilac because he's wearing a long lilac dressing gown. Cool. Instantly. Well, hello there. I expect you'd like my autograph, would you? And Harry's like, yeah, he hasn't changed much, has he? <laughs> oh my god. And Ron was like, Oh, Ron asked how he was because he sounded a little bit guilty because it's his wand that backfired on Lockhart. But Harry's thinking, since he wiped, tr was trying to wipe mine and Ron's memory, my sympathy is pretty limited. So <laughs> I'm with Don't Harry. Blame him. That's why I can understand Ron. <laughs> I agree. Um, Lockhart says he's doing very well. How many autographs do they want? He can do joined mm -hmm. up writing now. Way to go, I Lock. think he probably had to like work up to that. Oh, for sure. Do you know what? Go ahead, Sarah. Do you know what joined up writing is? I because I forgot that yeah, it was in your part. It's cursive. Because I was like, what does that mean? Because it's at the very end, like the very end of the chapter. He says it again. Mm -hmm. um, I was like, what does that mean? And it makes sense that they call it joined up writing because you're joining up all the letters. Yeah. I like, like I I get the sympathy for this, but being in Harry and Ron's shoes, I probably it was, would it was not him have or much. Them. You like know? what I mean, sympathy yeah i he mean was like gonna do that no. to them yeah i would have been I like not really mm. i would you had like, that coming I, to you can we honestly say they would have died down there the basilisk would have correct killed them. Yeah. i think that with ron like i i i would have a moment of being like oh i kind of feel bad that like i like you use my wand like a little bit but then like take a step and be like but you're the one that did the spell, so it's not my fault that my wand hit you back. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like, but like it's that's just my karma. personality that it's, like I would feel a little bit bad. That's just because you're a good person. <laughs> like even the snaky snake says she gets it, but we all get it. But we're like, but when you really think really about what he's gonna do, oh, yeah, he no, doesn't yeah. deserve sympathy because oh, yeah, uh, I don't think it's he deserves hard. sympathy. Like it's just karma. What someone said in the Instant. chat was like, he's a total trash human being, but they don't think that he deserves what he got. Um, and then someone else said he basically got an instant serving of instant karma. Yeah. Um, I could see it. Here we go. I could see it from all sides. That's my okay, but, Hufflepuff. But <laughs> I don't have any sympathy for him because he really just did it to himself. Actions have Like he was, he was going to leave them to die. Yeah. Like they were supposed to die down there yeah. in his mind. Why about well, I mean, and he was supposed to be the hero down there. Oh. Like he would have just left the school. So like yeah. he would have left Ginny to die down there. It's a very um, muddy situation. Yeah. I mean, do uh, again, do I have that much sympathy for him? I mean, I still, I still kind of do. Cause that's an awful, awful thing to do is to have no memory, you know, or have, have little memory. Cause it sounds like he doesn't even, retain i don't know it doesn't to me it doesn't seem like he doesn't even retain like new memories you know to me it's just like he remembers he, nothing it's just imagine how many people he did that to though and it's like i, I mean clearly two wrongs don't make a right like i'm not saying like all's right in the world now that he got like his karma but just for me from my perspective i'm just like dude you had it coming to you like how many people did you yeah, put in this situation <laughs> and the fact that you went on your merry way and kept doing it, getting more famous, making more money on and on. 
I yeah. did he ruin their memories or did he just take them I, away? I don't know. I think he it's, ruined you know them I mean? because he. So are they all in hospitals? I think. I mean, do I think it's uh, any of it's okay? No, but I I still think it just. If I'm being honest, like this this situation of like not remembering anything and being like in a locked unit because it's for his safety. Like I, I've had personal experience with that and it's horrible. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I know with him, he doesn't really get visitors cause he doesn't really have any family. Cause I think it was just him and his mom, but, um, it sucks. It's craziness. Ugh. I mean, it's I just, guess like we just don't really... really know enough to know for sure. Like what he did. I just am assuming that he aimed to do the same thing he did to all the previous people to Ron and Harry and look what it did to him. So I yeah. think but based like, on what he was trying to do to Ron and Harry, I would say also, he did that to everybody. It, we also don't know like it was what broken wand. Yeah. You know? Like how much that affected it. Like did it, but you have, because he was doing it so hard, like it flushed back even harder. It came back at him even harder. I don't know. You know what I mean? But if you try and remove somebody's memory, okay. Can you can't in my head, pick specific memories so literally if this is your life's work figuring out how to get rid of right uh f- freshly caught cornish pixies like are you wiping that person's memory all the way back to the point of when the they decided to they try s- yeah yeah i don't know that's why i feel like it's very hard like it's that's why i feel like whatever he did was pretty intense because i would think yes he has to erase all of the <laughs> memories that pertain to whatever he's stealing you know what i'm saying a, yeah yeah i just want to point out, i'm not laughing at that i literally am thinking of the fact that megan said pretty intense and i'm thinking about people being pretty intense <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's a not goes. thing to say but like i don't i don't think what he did was ever okay i do think it's it, it was much more than like because realistically like say i don't remember honestly who he like the whole like ver- werewolf one or whatever i don't know or whatever vampire thing yeah. right i don't know who he obliviated for mm-hmm. it but like y- y- typically people going out on on things like this where maybe they in real time life like are like isn't it jane like goodall or whomever like went to africa and like learned and studied with monkeys like or apes don't quote me i'm sure all of that is wrong but like she didn't go alone she didn't just not tell anyone you know what i mean so like the person going to do whatever with vampires or all of his other books, they like would did he obliviate them and then like everyone that knew about it? Cause like that's super suspicious too, where like he all of a sudden is now the one saying it when like Joe Schmo was the one that was originally doing it. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Hmm. Like how many people did he obliv- obliviate? I just, I just know with the whole memory thing that is an awful situation to be in. Um, I'll talk about it in my section probably a little bit. It's just too parents. too much is unknown about that story. Yeah, too much yeah. is unknown about Lockhart's story, and uh, I guess we'll just have to speculate. Yeah, I guess I then. just say karma happened, <laughs> basically. True. I was just thinking, I don't think he, I forgot about this, but he, I don't think he was going to leave them down there because he, in his story. Oh yeah. They he was tra- going to bring oh, them back you up. You tragically lost your minds at the sight of the girl's mangled body, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So I think he was going to mm-hmm. bring them back up. So he was never going to save Jenny. Right. What? He was so never going to save Jenny. Yeah. He was just going to save Harry and Ron and get out of there and leave the basilisk down there for, you know, someone else to deal with. Yeah. I remember him saying that. I don't know if it's a but movieism, I but either way. I know that is said in the movie because I yeah. remember that line mm-hmm. for sure. For sure. For sure. Keep going, Kat. All right. Yeah. So Basically, has, I don't like Lockhart. Sorry, uh, go ahead. He has I mean, this <laughs> moment not when he looks at Harry and he's like, have we met before? And Harry's like, yeah, you used to teach us at Hogwarts, remember? And he's like, teach? Me? Did I? And then his smile came back on his face so fast, it was kind of scary. And he's like, taught me everything I know I expected, did I? Well, how about those autographs then? And he's like, I'd say around a dozen. You can give them all out to your little friends. I just, something that, I don't know if I feel sad for him or like, oh my God, you really 
are kind of a trash human being because the only part of himself that he remembers is how narcissistic he is. But that was like his biggest mm. part of his personality. You know what I, I mean? Know. Like, I I just see this like not again. I'm not saying I'm like glorifying him or anything, but with with my grandma, um, because she had Alzheimer's. So not that it's like the same thing as, but it's similar with like not remembering. Um, like there were parts of her like she was very much like a feisty lady, and she got a little bit. And I think this is sometimes common too. Um, like, so, uh, sometimes like that would be what was coming out more was like her feistiness um but even like she also sometimes like would recognize people but like not even know that she recognized them you know what i mean like there's just some aspects of your personality like she, I, another thing with her she was a nurse for many years and then was retired i think by the time that i was born but she still like had that in the back of her head because she did it for so long so he's been doing this thing where he's been that narcissistic guy giving out autographs for so long like literally like my grandma we had to put her um like in a nursing home because she got too much for my aunt to take care of because she was like wandering off and all those things but um she, the, they found her like behind the nurse's station and they were like it was i think the per person was like newer or something they're like oh like are you like the new here and she's like yeah i'm the new head nurse and they like thought that she was and like the one person worked they're like no like that's mrs o'malley like she's a patient but she mm -hmm. was so used to doing that because she used to be so a head sweet. nurse you know what i mean for so many years it's like just yeah. ingrained in the back of your head yeah there's a lot I just said, and I don't know what I said. I know what you so said. So hopefully it made sense. It, it made sense. Um, Kate, going back to what you said, um, and now I uh, now I don't know because you just have to tell me what you think. What do you read into this? Okay. Quote, the adventure ends here, boys. He said, I shall take a bit of this skin back up to the school. Mm -hmm. Tell them I was too late to save the girl and that you two tragically lost your minds at the sight of her mangled body. Say goodbye to your memories. So he says he's take the skin... Yeah, I think it was going to leave them all. But he doesn't say anything else. So it's like you have to kind of read whatever you want yeah. into that. I read it as you lost your minds and then, you know, I couldn't do anything with you. Yeah. But to like, each their own. I don't know. Because I wonder, I, like, if the people that he obliviated, if they could form new memories. Um, I just truly I so. think that he meant to do what happened to him, to Harry and Ron. I, I like, I know that like, we don't know because of the wand was broken and all of that. But like, I feel like the only thing that the broken wand did was backfire it to him. But what happened to him was meant to happen to Harry and Ron. Oh, so completely nothing. Well, they, almost I mean, completely nothing. Yeah, I think that his intention was to make it seem like they went crazy at the sight of her body and the sight of the Chamber of Secrets. And... I like by no means am I downplaying how horrible dementia is. Like, don't let like don't just well, don't is, nobody don't. Knew, nobody two things I'm just saying. I know. Yeah, I'm just saying. Like, like to anybody listening, please don't twist my words that way. That's not what I'm saying. What, but I do think that what he got was what he meant to give, and well, and. I think now we also have to remember, so like this haul happened how many years ago and they've been working with him. So when he first got hit with it, he couldn't even remember his name. You know what I mean? Right. So uh, he had to work. That's to another. That. Yes. Like he he's had to work at these things and he's probably like remembering more as he's there helping work with him. So like he remembers that he likes signing autographs and he likes pictures of right. himself. And and that's that's like a thing that um they they teach you at least in my experience with like people that have dementia or that have alzheimer's like you you put things around them that um are Spark familiar memory. to them and like I, I i've only seen this where like some they do put pictures of them with him i think it's more of the narcissistic thing that he's got pictures all around but like when where my grandma lived um they had pictures of her and my grandpa and like my family around um and even when people come into the hospital and they they don't want them to to have and we talked about this earlier in another episode with like the whole delirium that can happen in a hospital mm -hmm. they have like bring in pictures like so they can see like their family or themselves and yeah. um stuff like that just to kind of ground them a little bit with things that you know they're used to seeing you know mm -hmm. like maybe a favorite blanket or have them like i always like to know um like what kind of music they like to listen to because 
like they can get really agitated quickly and you don't want that to happen so like i like music that's going to be calming to them so like if they like to listen to a certain type of thing put that on yeah yeah stuff like that i just i also just like i'm think like i'm thinking about like had had he been successful in his intent like he just did that to harry potter <laughs> you know he i mean like that though but but like just imagine like what what would have happened like so much could be different because like the cause wouldn't have had Harry really to do what he needed to do like mm-hmm. I, I just it's just so crazy that one man's stupidity could have completely altered everything for the whole wizarding world not Art even just like <laughs> right like it's just crazy and I I uh, I just I will say we we can't we can't think about too much about like what would have happened because that's just it's not script time I know it's just crazy to think (laughs) like you're like yeah yeah no you're not wrong um he's he's like you know another he's kind of like an umbrage where like you see her as like the woman that's in pink and that's like such a like a bubbly like color and she's really like the worst human imaginable because she's literally the worst and hates everybody um and then there's um gilderoy who like portrays himself as this like super nice guy and he's so good looking and he's all these things and you find out he's a fraud um total opposite of Mm -hmm. what you think well i mean i guess she looks like a toad so she doesn't look great but that's just her evilness coming out in her face toads are gonna toad oh my god (laughs) And Lockhart's gonna Lockhart. <laughs> Harry's gonna Harry. And Ron is gonna Ron. Someone in the, in the chat said if Harry did have his mind erased, he'd be like, who's Harry Potter? And I really appreciate <laughs> that. <laughs> uh, uh. All right. Back to good old Gilderoy. So a healer comes to the rescue, sort of. Um, and she's like, Gilderoy, you naughty boy, where have you wandered off to? And she's like this really motherly looking healer, which I think is really someone great to put in this kind of ward. Especially for him, because I think he needs it. Um, and then she sees the others and she's like, oh my god, you have visitors. He never gets visitors. And she can't think of why, because he's such a sweetie. And I kind of think this is really weird. Because he had how many fans? And whether it was for good intentions that a fan would come and see him, or some kind of weird curiosity. It's strange to me that no one would have tried to get in there. Fame is a fickle friend. I think that, <laughs> but uh, this does not surprise me. You know what I mean? Like, you can have like I, I feel I feel like in a lot of times in like movies and like shows where like people are trying to get famous and then they get famous and they lose all of their real friends. Right. Yeah. Um, that that's. I don't know how many he had in the first place because he sounds kind of like a tool when he was in Hogwarts. Um, you know what I mean? Like he was like, oh, I'm so smart. I'm so this, I'm so that. And like, again, narcissistic that he only had fans. He didn't have friends. And like, mm-hmm. once you're out of the limelight, they're going to forget about you. So like, are they really going to go and visit him? Of course not. Do, does, do people know he's a fraud now? I don't know. Did yeah, that ever come out? I don't know. I don't probably not think so. But also, like she's Harry, acting like she doesn't know who he really. Not Harry that she's not acting, but she doesn't everything. seem like oh, like Lockhart, blah blah blah. You know what I mean? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. But anyway, Gilderoy very happily. That sounds weird. Lockhart very happily told her, uh, "We're doing autographs. They want a ton of them. They won't say no for an answer. Or take no for <laughs> answer." Um, and so like the healer's like all proud of him, which. In her position, I get it. Like, she's probably working with him day in, Mm -hmm. day out. Has seen his progress over the last two years. Um, It's been more than two years. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Three, two and a half. And she tells them that he was rather well known a few years ago. Um, And we very much hope that his liking for giving autographs is a sign that his memory might be coming back a little bit. Um, And we find out he's in a closed ward um, because... And he must have slipped out while she was bringing in the Christmas presents. The door's usually locked. Not that he's dangerous. It's like Sarah said, like, for his own safety. Mm -hmm. Um, And she says he's a bit of a danger to himself. 
Bless him. Doesn't know who he is, you see. Wanders off and can't remember how to get back. So nice of them to come and see him. So Ron tries to be like, no, 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 we were just going to get a cup of tea. But she looks so, like, happy that they're there. He's like, oh, okay, let's just not stay long, okay? Um, but this is weird. So the healer has to use Alohomora to get in. But Lockhart was just like, boop, wandering <laughs> off. You know what I mean? How do you no, get out? She said that they were bringing, he probably slept out. You literally just read this. <laughs> but like how if it's locked? Or is it like because, his room? Because must, they were listen, bringing in Christmas bring, presents. Yes. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Here's my thing with Lohomora. I think it's garbage. <laughs> you what know, do you think it's garbage? It's I just so like, easy. Why even bother? Yeah. Locking a door? Yeah, if you can just like if you think about it, like when do they teach kids Alohomora? So like locking Fluffy in that room only protected like the first years. Like, <laughs> like what was the point? Yeah, like, <laughs> are other students really like how many people found like went up there anyways? I don't know. Any room like what breakers? if every year they told them to like hey, don't go here, and then they did. I don't know. I just it protects them I against think it's muggles. Kind of I guess. I like don't get it like I can get like other spells that like provide that kind of like like for example at Gringotts like the only way that you could enter um the Lestrange's vault is if the (laughs) the Lestrange's vault that's literally what Jim Dale says so (laughs) um is that the (laughs) goblin has to put its hand on the door and then the door disappears so like that's good. <laughs> but, like, I feel like you can just aloha more anything. Well, we're not talking about the Lestrangians with the... You can the kiss the fattest <laughs> part Alohomora. of this bottom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I always think about, like, you know, burglary. You know? Burglary. I do, like... <laughs> oh my doors are locked that's all right i got a wand hello home more it's not locked anymore bro like it just seems stupid i don't disagree with you okay cool i love you guys <laughs> <laughs> um so i think it's kind of it's kind of cute that she like keeps a firm grasp firmly grasp it on lockhart's <laughs> arm <laughs> <laughs> because he really yes. is like a little kid like that's you know what I mean like he'll just wander and then he gets lost so he doesn't remember how to get back um, yeah. and she explains to them like this is a long term resident ward so it's kind of cool that we're getting like this kind of background information on Mungo's um, but he's been doing well and then we hear about Mr. Bode if you remember he Oof. Um, what did he get caught in down the that corridor at the ministry right yeah but well the <laughs> The He's an unspeakable yeah. department of mysteries. Yeah. Yeah, that old corner there at the uh, ministry. Of, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, apparently, he's regaining his power of speech, but he's speaking no language that they recognize. So, so here's a little um, description of Lockhart's room. It's definitely his because behind his bed is covered in pictures of himself, and he also autographed many of them. To himself. Good job. Oh. Solid. I think you might actually get your memory back because you seem to remember a lot of who you are. Um, the second he sat down, he grabbed a fresh deck of port of uh, uh, photographs, starts signing them right away, and then he tells them that he's not forgotten. He still gets fan mail like all the time, and I think her name's Gladys Gudgeon. I think he mentions her into when uh, Harry's having his detention with him, helping him sign his fan mail. Yeah, doesn't she write? <laughs> All the time or something? Gladys. 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 And she still writes weekly, so that's kind of sweet. And he says, I just wish I knew why. But then he suspects it's simply his good looks. <laughs> um, so we get a description of some of his ward mates. So there's a sallow-skinned, mournful-looking wizard in the opposite bed. And he's mumbling to himself. He doesn't seem aware of anything around him. There's a woman whose entire head was covered in fur. And Harry instantly thinks of Cat Hermione. Um, and I want to be Cat Hermione. Right? Meow. Like, what? She could have lived her life that way. Meow. Um, and then at the far end of the corridor, there were curtains drawn around two beds. That's a little hint, hint. Remember that for like two seconds. From now. <laughs> <laughs> the healer was. Uh, Remember that for like, you know, foreshadowing. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, the healer's passing out Christmas presents. The woman with fur gave several loud barks, so she may have had some sort of thing like Hermione, and Hermione just got really lucky that they could fix her. I mean, but no, also... it took her... She was in the hospital for, like, weeks. Yeah, but man, I'm happy, man. Yeah, it... The whole... Honestly, that whole timeline is skewed, because it's like she was in the in the hospital for weeks, and it's like February 1st, all of these things happened. Now, I don't really know the exact dates, but I'm like, how can you... Like, weeks, in my mind, is like a long, long time, and that was yeah. like a day. Yeah, I feel that. I'll follow that. Go ahead and finish, Katie. Yeah, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. I um, just want to talk. <laughs> I want it to be Sasa time. Um, so we see Roderick Bode. He received a potted plant and a calendar with a different fancy hippogriff for each month. Doesn't Isn't this plant kind of important? Very yeah. much so. Mm-hmm. It's gonna saying. kill him. A pot of plant. I love you like that's all I'm gonna say, and I'm like, oh, he's gonna die. <laughs> it's devil snake. I say you. Devil I say you. He did. It's he's the devil's gonna... lettuce. Oh my. Devil snare. Devil snare. What is One would thing? say. Wait, what is the rest of yes. it? I just is... remember we'll sulk in the sun. But that's I know. Right. It's deadly fun. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. we'll sulk. <laughs> but we'll sulk in the sun. That's it. Yes. Devil snare hates devil sunlight. Snare hates sunlight. You know what? No, that's <laughs> not how it went. That's not no, it's like, not. In the book, she's looking, she's like, if I just had some wood, and Ron's like, are you a witch, witch or not? Yeah, are you a witch or not? <laughs> um, but then, something catches Harry's little ear. Um, the healer goes, oh, Mrs. Longbottom, are you leaving already? Cue, let's all stop. Uh, oh, uh, that's my section. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Legit. Very well done. Can you imagine if that's what I did? I just groaned for 30 minutes <laughs> or however long it takes me to read it. You're a weirdo. I'm going to read from the chapter because, you know, that's what I do best. Reading. I read. Harry's mind spun around. The curtains had been drawn back from the two beds at the end of the ward. See, it was foreshadowing from 20 seconds ago when Katie was talking. And two visitors were walking back down the aisle between the beds, a formidable looking old witch wearing a long green dress a moth-eaten fox fur and pointed hat decorated with what was unmistakably a stuffed vulture nothing but christmas finest and trailing behind (laughs) her looking thoroughly depressed neville with the rush of a sudden rush of understanding harry realized who the people in the end beds must be he cast around wildly for some means of distracting the other so that neville can we just say Harry, you're a good friend. So that Neville could leave the ward unnoticed and unquestioned, but Ron had looked up at the sound of the name Longbottom too, and before Harry could stop and had called out, Neville! So, Mm. Ron calls out Neville's name and asks him, oh, hey, like, have you seen Lockhart's here? And he's like, oh, who are you visiting? Obviously not knowing that, um, like, you know, he's not knowing. So, like, Neville's grandmother then asks Neville, are these kids friends of yours? And so poor Neville doesn't say anything. Um, and then Gran looks at Harry and recognizes him. And this is a little quote from the book because I like how they described they being JKR described her hand <laughs> sticking out a shriveled claw like hand for him to shake. <laughs> She tells Harry that Neville speaks highly of him and Harry's like, uh, thanks. And he shakes her hand. And like, while this is happening, like poor Neville, his face is getting redder. And then she also immediately recognizes Ron and Ginny as Weasley's. And she shakes their hands and calls their fans. She's like, oh, I know your parents. Not well, but you know, whatever. And she calls them their parents, fine people. And I said, I'm like, this might be the first time that we've actually heard someone explicitly say this. And... This is, I think, the first pure-blooded witch that we've heard say this, because the first pure-bloods we meet, which are um, the Malfoys, because Harry meets them and, well, meets Draco. Mm -hmm. Um, But, like... Madame Malkins. Correct. So, like, this is the first pure-blooded witch that we meet that um, says that the Weasleys are fine, because, like, when we meet the Malfoys, because they're really the first pure-blooded... We mean the whole series Mm -hmm. say the opposite because they're blood traders. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So you're welcome from that information. And so then she also recognizes Hermione and Hermione's like surprised that she knew who she was. And she says, this is another quote from the book. Yes. Neville's told me all about you. Helped him out of a few sticky spots. Haven't you? He's a good boy. She said, casting a sternly appraising look down at her 
down her rather bony nose at Neville, but he hasn't got his father's talent, I'm afraid to say. And then she jerks her head mm. in the direction of the two beds at the end of the ward. Um, and so at this, like Ron is amazed. First of all, don't talk about Neville like that. He's better than you ever give him credit for. I think that she is trying to <laughs> love him in a way that he doesn't need to be loved. In. Correct. She's a very <laughs> tough. She, love. She's tough. Yeah, she's tough love, but. I feel like that is just not Neville's environment to thrive. And Mm -hmm. I wish that she would understand that, but I feel, Mm -hmm. I see myself in Neville more and more and more because I'm the one, like, I like always need reassurance. Mm -hmm. Like you could tell me the same thing 20 times, but I one like to hear it. It makes me feel good. And two kind of need to hear it. So I think that's how he needs to be. Like you need to encourage him that way. Don't just be like, well, he doesn't have his talent. No, like you got this. Mm-hmm. Remember who your parents are? Like they love you. They would be so yeah. proud of you. I don't know. Well, no, it kind of makes me think about our workouts that we do together. Like yeah. when I kind of like push you, you do it. Like you're physically able to do it. It's just like you said, you like you're a words of affirmation kind of person. Yes. So I think that Neville well, and craves Neville that too as well. right now is working not under the best of circumstances because he doesn't even have his own wand yet. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So like he's so yes. close think to getting his own potential. He yeah, at what cost? <laughs> I know one with some more confidence and two with a wand that's his own. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like having like he's uh, just in a tough spot. Can we know? just pause and say, Katie? You are beautiful. You are smart. You are strong. And I love your face. Thanks. I love all your faces, too. I also I felt a little great. John Mulaney in that moment, and I want somebody to recognize that, so. I thought oh, you is that from, go uh, I'm new in town. <laughs> is that what that's from? It's from new in town. I just said that. Yes. So Ron looks amazed as he says, what? Is your dad done at the end, Neville? And it's like, it's just a little bit tactless that he's saying this, which Ron kind of is a lot of the times at this point in time, but also a lot of kids are, you know, tactless. Um, Yeah, Megan. Um, Vinny brought up a good point in the chat and said, like, at this point, why are the Longbottoms still in the hospital? Like, why could they not? Like, they are rich, aren't they not? So, like, why can they know. not have them at their home with, like, a caretaker at this point? Like, it's been Some, so many uh, years. But I, I, so here's here's my perspective on that. They both don't remember anything. Right. Um, yeah. And that's a lot. That's a lot to take on, even with another caregiver in your house. It's like taking um, on two like, full grown toddlers, yes. kind of. And that as, are as much as like. And right. I also think that, like, it, it, in that space, like, Neville's grandmother and that kind of thing, I feel like was a lot, like, pushed under the rug. You know what I mean? And, like, we were talking about, like, um, people not talking about mental health. Like, people didn't talk about stuff like this either. You know what I mean? So, like, they don't want... Neville didn't tell anybody. Not saying, like, it's Neville's fault at all. Like, I, I think that's a whole different thing of, like not telling his friends like about his parents but like and i know that she's about to be like well it's nothing to be ashamed of whatever else but like maybe she just thinks that the best place for them to be is in this ward because it is a lot for two grown people and like Mm -hmm. then they'd have to find a caregiver to be with them 24 7 and probably more than one they're gonna they would wander oh yeah yeah. correct correct it's 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 It's, easier said than done a wonderful point was brought up in the discord that I want to put some light on. Um, people are inquiring if the long bottoms are rich. Are they, aren't they part of like the sacred 28? Um, but yes, that doesn't necessarily mean that they have money. And Vinny brought up a great point. He said, well, so were the gaunts and look how they lived. Yeah. Um, I think that, that they're on um, the same level as that. But just because you're, you know, one of the original Sacred 28 doesn't necessarily mean that you're flush with cash. And Longbottom is part of the Sacred 28. Yes. Um, they are. And I w- our, f- our friendly website, Cora, yeah. I was just looking up, you know, are the Longbottoms rich? <laughs> and so it says <laughs> that 
<laughs> it says that Google they this? are. Does Harry and the Potters have a song about level? I don't, I don't know, know, but they should. But um, it makes me think of the Draco Malfoy song. Draco and the Malfoy is like, my dad is rich. Is rich. <laughs> <laughs> Your dad yeah. is dead. <laughs> oh my god! Such a yeah. Yeah. Like it's bad. It's bad. <laughs> Awful. Um, that is horrendous. Because they're in the sacred twenty-eight, um, it is impl- it implies that they have at least some wealth. And unlike the Weasleys, it makes them more respectable in society. And that's because aren't the Weasleys, are the Weasleys on the Sacred 20? They were taken off because they're not. No. Or are they? No, the Potters were taken off. The Potters, I think they were ever on because their last name was too. Common. um, Muggle. Correct. Yeah. Um, Weasleys are on there, aren't they? Weasleys are on there. Yeah, they're on there. Are they? Okay. Well. Yeah. Yeah. I do agree, though. Vinny also said, like, I think you're the way of that the tapestry, maybe you're thinking of like, well, the tapestry and they're saying like Neville's parents were also, also Aurors, which is a good paying job. This is true. Um, and I think that's part of why they're super respected in the community. You know, I, I think, that. too, though, I like what Vinny said that, like, Neville's grandma has she like holds herself like she is rich, you know, like she kind of mm-hmm. reminds me of like. Um, just like somebody who has this air about them mm-hmm. that like they are wealthy. She wears furs. She, you know what I mean? Or and she birds. Be like a cordial on a snow. Oh, yes. Mm. Who? True. I knew I was just about to uh, say, like, I was just reading something or somebody was pretending true. to be rich. That is like, She's okay. To, so, hold the name. So, if, you know. So if you've not read the Hunger Games prequel, oh, what is that? No. Something of songbirds and snakes and <laughs> the ballad <laughs> of songbirds and snakes. <laughs> so yeah, that. and that wasn't a spoiler, I promise. No, it wasn't. no spoiler. So y- you find out about President Snow's um, upbringing, upbringing, yeah. if you will, um, and that's just one of those things. I don't want to say anymore. Just that he tries to put on the. Air. On he puts on it the the show that he's rich. So he on put airs. on airs. <laughs> is that what put I said? On airs. Oh. Um, Pinky Any out. Hoosies. Um. So then Neville's. I'm trying to use my phone as a remote, except it's not a remote. It's a mouse. Is what I'm trying to use it for. So Neville's grandmother is surprised to learn that Neville hasn't told his parent. Nope. Told his <laughs> friends about his parents. <laughs> Um, I'm like, wow, I'm like surprised I already went this fast. So I'm going to read from the book. It says, Neville took a deep breath, looking up at the ceiling and shook his head. Harry could not remember ever feeling sorrier for anyone. Mm. But he could not think of any way of helping Neville out of the situation. Well, it's nothing to be ashamed of, says Mrs. Longbottom angrily. You should be proud, Neville, proud. They didn't give their health um, and their sanity, so their only son would be ashamed of them, you know. He goes, I'm not ashamed, said Neville, faintly, very faintly, still looking anywhere but at Harry and the others. Ron was now standing on tiptoe um, to look over at the inhabitants at, of the two beds. And, like, this is, like, I feel like another moment of tactlessness with Ron because, like, he doesn't know the whole situation. And, like, really, like, I think this is something in human nature, like, that you're inquisitive and you're curious so like you're gonna look at, at something and then you're like oh like now I'm good. something know that's the different. whole story like yeah. it's gonna make me something feel something that you're not yeah uh, accustomed to seeing all the time yeah and so that's why um, it's important for you to show your children people's differences because it's okay to be different yeah and I said like in this moment in time like I just my heart goes out to Neville cause like he's in such a hard situation where like maybe like i i don't think he's ashamed i think it's just like what do you say and like you don't want a a lot of times you don't want the pity and like the like you hear that i i know i've seen this like on shows like i didn't want to see people like i consider my friends to give me like just that that look in their eyes that like when they hear that my parents are and have been living in saint mungo's for years Mm -hmm. um it's just probably, hard. Can I point out the fact that it is probably not cheap for them to be staying there? 
Yeah, so that's probably where you know what I'm goes. saying. Yeah. yeah, that's that's a pretty penny right yeah. there. Yeah. That's, well, these are not we have to people. You we know? have to remember though that. I mean, I guess I, I don't know about time frames, but the UK does have like those are Muggles. But I would assume that if the Muggles have universal health care, then why wouldn't the Wizards? Because but they don't I, do all. They don't do the same things all I the wonder, time. I wonder. I wonder though, like if it's it's. Uh, I wonder if it's the same with like long term care in a hospital or like a situation like this versus other things because like that does take up a lot of money. You're taking up space. You're taking up food. You're taking up medicine. Like all, I I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how it all works because really I don't know how it all works in America either. That's it's expensive. We're crazy. Yeah. It's overpriced um, so, in America. I'll tell you that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just I just tried to scroll my laptop screen with my finger, and that's not how Macs work. Correct. <laughs> um, so his grand goes on to say that her son and his wife were tortured into insanity by the followers of Voldemort. She says, "You know who." Um, but then we later find out that it's actually Bellatrix who was that specific follower. Um, and so she tells them this and like to Hermione and Ginny like react by like throwing their hands over their mouth like in shock and she continues on to say and this is another quote it says they were Aurors you know and very well respected within the wizarding community highly gifted the pair of them um, and I'm probably going to cry because I think I've read this before go for it so there's an article on the wizarding world dot com not dot net your tears sustain me um <laughs> <laughs> So, um, and it's unsung heroes, Frank and Alice Longbottom. So I don't, like, first of all, why would they put that picture up first? That is not nice to us. Are you going to cry now? I don't know. So uh, as we know, like when we talked about this, cause like I did not remember this until we talked about when Harry first sees this, that like a big, I mean, obviously like this happening is a horrific situation, but a big part of like why it was her more horrific than I think like if this was during for Voldemort's reign, like they thought they being the community thought it was done and over with. And this happened after the downfall. Um, I don't know how long after, I don't think it was like months, but Mm -hmm. um, Voldemort was dead and gone when Bellatrix and company went and tortured these two to the point where they no longer recognize their son. Um, So <clears throat> Imagine feeling such incredible pain that it drives you mad. This was the sad fate of Frank and Alice Longbottom. And this is a quote from the book. It says, yes, they were talking about um, Neville's parents, said Dumbledore. His father, Frank, was an aura just like Professor Moody. He and his wife were tortured for information about Voldemort's whereabouts after he lost his powers, as you heard. So they're dead, said Harry quietly. No, said Dumbledore, his voice full of a bitterness that Harry had never heard the, um, there before. They are insane. They are both in St. Mungo's Hospital for magical <laughs> maladies and uh, injuries. <laughs> I believe Neville visits them with his grandmother during the holidays, foreshadowing. They do not recognize him. That's heart-wrenching. That's from Goblet, um, by the way. I it uh, I I've been there where I've obviously I've obviously talked at length about my grandma having it um and like at at one point like I had I was with my siblings and we were like talking with her um and it like hit me like I obviously did not because it would have been real weird if I had known my grandmother for the length of time her kids knew her because that's not how life works um and I would say like three maybe like two thirds of my life with my grandma, like she, I like she not, I don't want to say normal. She, this was before she got like sick. You know what I mean? Um, so like I've had that time and then majority of my last 10, 15 years with her, like weren't with her remembering things as well. But like, it hit me, like my, my aunts go and see her all the time. And like, they would all go and like see their mom. And like, it took me a second. Cause sometimes I feel like you don't really think about the fact that like, your parents parents like yeah they're your grandma but like that's their mom you know what i mean and it hit me really hard the one day like i almost started crying like at the house well, it was like a nursing home thinking like looking at my aunt being like that's your mom and she's here i'm like that's hard that's hard to see your mom not remember who you are yeah. um all right, so I gotta stop talking about it because I'm still crying. So let's read back about Neville's parents not remembering him. <clears throat> 
So this is the first time we heard about how Neville's parents were affected during Voldemort's first reign of terror. What made their attack worse, perhaps, was that it was carried out after Voldemort had fallen from power and people thought that they were finally safe. Dumbledore went on to explain to Harry how the attack had caused a wave of utter fury because the Long Bottoms were such a popular couple. Um, the next time we hear about the long or heard about the Long Bottoms in more detail was when Professor Moody gave Harry. Um, a battered old photograph and in it were the original members of the Order of the Phoenix and among them were Alice and Frank. This moment really did capture the unsung heroism of this couple. They were parents and yet like Ruben Re- oh sorry Katie they were parents and yet like Remus Lupin and Tonks why did they just put his full name? They just put Tonks why can't they just put Remus? We know. know who he is. Right. And they gave their Remus. lives for the protection of others. They stepped up in tough times and helped to create an order which not only saved people, muggles and wizards alike, alike when Voldemort first came to power, but was successful enough to be rekindled when he returned. Just imagine for a moment, if you had been in their shoes, would you have stood up for your de- from your desk, put on your robe, grabbed your broom, and headed out into the cold night air to a secret meeting, knowing it could result in your death? Or would you have locked the door, laid down those hexes, and hoped that the bad things passed you by? I don't wouldn't blame you if you did either one of those. Um, it would have been very easy to do the latter. Frank and Alice did not. They stepped up and paid the most awful price for their bravery. Harry's stomach, already uncomfortable, clenched as he looked at Alice Longbottom. He knew her round, friendly face very well, even though he had never met her because she was the image of her son, Neville. Poor devils, growled Moody, better dead than what happened to them. And that's from later on in the chapter, or the book, I mean, Order of the Phoenix. Mm. There was a moment when Harry, Hermione, and Ron met up with Neville. What? Ginny's there, too. All right, cool. Forget Forget about about her. She's not even in the picture. Oh, yeah, she is. <laughs> Sorry. I'm getting mad. Everything's fine. So there's a moment when Harry, Hermione, and Ron met up with Neville and his gran at St. Mungo's Hospital. Neville looked as if the ground was betraying him because it was refusing to eat him up. Harry didn't know which way to turn. Interestingly, it was in this moment that Neville's grandmother, so far someone we had only heard about through Neville's nervous mumbling, stood out. It was she who proudly announced the sacrifice made by her son and his wife. In many ways, it was their ailment which had made had likely made her so spiky and shaped the way she raised Neville. Well, there's nothing to be ashamed of, said Mrs. Longbottom angrily. You should be proud, Neville proud. They didn't give their health and their sanity, so their only son would be ashamed of them, you know. I think that's that's her. uh, How do I say this? She's so proud and she wants to shout it from the rooftops. And that's the way that she deals with her pain Mm -hmm. and sadness. Um, It's like, you can't Neville's just like a flower. He hasn't fully blossomed yet. And And what he does, it's going to be brilliant. And you you can't, you can't fault his grand. No, you know, she's just trying her best and doing what she thinks is right yeah. and stuff, like, even I, though it you comes have to off think about it. Like you said, not in the right. She's way. lost a son. Yes, he's still living. But Neville's also lost his parents. So, like, they're both grieving for the same but different person. Because um, really, did he probably didn't know he doesn't rem- probably doesn't have a lot of memories of them being. Yeah. Pre them being tortured. I mean, um, it's just like just like Harry's memories with his parents, Absolutely. right? I mean, it's Absolutely. basically the only memories he's going to have is from photos. Um, yeah. So it goes on to say, when Alice edged down the corridor to give Neville a Drupal's best blowing gum um, wrapper, you could almost taste the sadness of the situation. A part of her remembered Neville. She knew he was important to her and his tender pocketing of the old sweet wrapper showed how deeply he cared. Neville was an extraordinary boy and this was in no small part to the extraordinary nature of his parents. Ooh. <clears throat> and then this is later on in order the Phoenix. No, 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 said Bellatrix. She looks transported, alive with excitement as she glanced at Harry, then back at Neville. No, let's see how long bo- long bottom lasts before he cracks like his parents, unless Potter wants to give us the prophecy. And then it's, you know, don't she is truly don't give nasty. him my do dumb. I don't know. Roared. Don't give Neville. it to them. <laughs> <laughs> who seemed beside himself kicking and withering as Bellatrix drew nearer to him and his captor her wand raised don't give it to him Harry Bellatrix raised her wand Crucio like Neville you're the bee's knees Ugh. he would have done he would have done anything to save them 
Neville literally... Neville would do what Harry did for everybody in seven a million times over if he could. He would die Absolutely. for yeah. everyone like, if and he could. Really, like both, them. I think both of these boys' parents would be so proud of them. Oh, for sure. For sure. And even like, even when. Sarah, don't cry. <laughs> She's already crying. She's already it just crying. makes me really say that neither one of them uh, get to like really know their parents. I know. And it's mm-hmm. heart wrenching. Um, yeah. uh, it's just it, I think that it's really important it's really importantly shown in the series though like the children of war torn families yeah. and what it looks like um, it's sacrifice. I mean yeah it's it's sad but yeah. but think of think of the good and the sacrifice that those parents did for the wizarding world you know yeah. like Mm-hmm. It's hard. It's a hard pill to swallow, but at least they didn't die like in vain. At, mm-hmm. Like it meant something. Um, and I think that as much as they didn't know their parents, that still affects both of them so much. Yeah, it really does. So finishing this, I don't know how long this more is. Oh, this is it. It says in that moment, we know that Alice and Frank Longbottom lasted a very long time before they were broken by the Cruciatus curse. Hats off to them both. Not many would face down Bellatrix and watch her torture the person they love and still stay strong. We'll never know much about this couple beyond that grainy photo, but we'll always respect just how brave they and their son really were. So not to bring this up, but going back to a line in that and them not cracking. She can only torture one person at a time. Yeah. But was she the only one? Because there were other people there. Well, I, but I also think that she would probably get satisfaction out of like, I, making them watch. Yeah. I don't know how much other people did, but um, every time they talk about it, they talk about how she tortured his parents so Mm -hmm. we know she at least had something to do with both of them well so this is from i pulled up another article from like the wikia and it's the attack on frank and alice longbottom um and it was we know it was committed by dark dark eaters what (laughs) What? (laughs) dark eaters yes (laughs) that was their like name in between voldemort's you know (laughs) um so the Death Eaters, which were Bartimus, Crouch, Junior, Junior. Bellatrix, Rabistan, and Rodolphos. Lestrange. 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 Shortly after the downfall of Lord Voldemort during the first Wizarding War in 1991. So it was widely considered to be the most horrendous crime committed in the Wizarding world by most wizards and witches. Yes, Tiffany. So sh- they're torturing the Longbottoms for information after... Voldemort fell. The heck are they gonna tell him? You know what I mean? Tell they him. had nothing well, to tell. Are you talking about like, the Order of the Phoenix and the members of the Order of the Phoenix? But I wonder if they were just mad about that, and so they just were torturing them. Yeah, it's like, what I kind of know. information are you looking for? Yeah, I don't know. I don't think so. so I think um, it's just purely an attack. This is going on about talking about like the prophecy kind of, and because we know really it could have been Neville or Harry and. Um, kind of, you know, based on Voldemort made that yeah. choice, and so like, and this goes on to talk about the attack, and it has a quote from Augustus Longbottom, and says, "My husband, except doesn't." It says, "My son, says Augusta," and what you call it Augustus Gloop. <laughs> yes, Augusta, <laughs> Augustus Gloop. Um, so my son and his wife were tortured into insanity by you know whose followers. They were orers, you know, very well respected within the wizarding community. Highly gifted, the pair of them. I already read some of that. Yeah. So goes to say the four Death Eaters had managed to evade capture by the Ministry, resolved to find their master and return him to full strength. So Bellatrix Lestrange, her husband Rodolphus, and his brother, that's not spelled correctly, Ravistan, oh, but this called him Robustan, um, and Barney Crouch Jr. <laughs> they were targeted both Frank and Longbottom. And this says for information about where Voldemort was due to the couple's strong reputation as Aurors who had fought like, Voldemort they know and his supporters successfully. Um, and it says, I don't know where this is quote from. This says Frank was first captured. Um, 
of course the page that's from is no longer available but there's like a story about the mr and mrs longbottom allegedly from wizarding world um and hold on i gotta type this thing so it goes on to say he was the first to be captured again that was from an article that was on wizarding world which is no longer there so we'll see if i can find it he was subjugated and imprisoned at an undisclosed location before being heavily tortured by all four of the death eaters with the cruciatus curse the death eaters were hoping to find out information about their fallen master in order to locate him and restore him to power they were convinced that the long bottoms were involved um because they were included in the prophecy um and then they were unaware that Voldemort had fled to Albania um so Frank Longbottom could not give them what they wanted and however this did not discourage them from trying to uncover Voldemort's whereabouts and so he, this torture resulted in Frank being so physically mentally depleted that he spiraled into insanity and he was a, unable to provide them with anything useful then they targeted Alice so she was kidnapped and tortured in the same manner Although she had no about where, like, no idea about um, his whereabouts either. But I don't know um, because, like, I don't. It's from like that article that's no longer there, so I, I don't. I don't know. Do with what what you will. Yeah. Um, basically. Yep. Any hoosies. Um, so like, it's then. Um, that Alice walks up or starts walking down like towards them and so Neville's um, mother interrupts him and then this is a quote from the book it says she no longer had the plump happy looking face Harry had seen in Moody's old photograph of the original Order of the Phoenix her face was thin and worn now her eyes over large and her hair which had turned to white was wispy and dead looking so then she goes to like give something that's like in her hands to Neville and Gran says um, again and then tells Neville like just take whatever it is um, but he already like had his hand open to receive it um, and so Alice had given him the empty wrapper to a Drubal's blowing Drubal's best blowing gum wrapper thing and so I googled that <laughs> I was like Google what's that and it's a wizarding brand of bubble gum manufactured by Honeydukes company LTD it was presumably <laughs> invented by Drubal <laughs> it lets its the consumer blow bluebell colored bubbles that refuse to pop for days. Oh, Invented by miss by Mr. or Mrs. or Miss Drool. <laughs> it says described as guaranteed never to lose its flavor. That's awesome though. You know who would love that? The the girl from uh oh, yeah. Violet. Violet would like Violet. Violet, yeah. Violet, yeah. Turning Violet Violet. So it's definitely not fruit for gum. <laughs> Not fruit stripes. Fruit stripes <laughs> gum. Um, so it says it's available in sugar free, crazy berry flavor and possibly others as well. And it's sold at Honey Dukes and Hogsmeade and on the food trolley for two sickles, but it's also sold at sold at Sugar Plump's Sweet Shop in Sweets hold on. Sugar Plump's Sweets Shops. Nope. Sugar Plump's <laughs> Sweets Shop <Stop>. in Alley <laughs> Alley for four sickles. Um Hunting Dukes and is the in Hogsmeade. Company mean. sells a cotton candy flavored version of this candy that makes the inside of a person's mouth turn blue. Honey Dukes is in Hogsmeade and Sugar Plums is in Diagon Alley. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And then this is what um, the wiki says about Drupal. Drupal was a witcher wizard who invented Drupal's best blowing gum at an unknown time. Thank you. Thanks, Wikia. Species coming in clutch. human, allegedly. Um. So yeah, that's that. And so then Alice heads back to her bed and then Neville looks at his friends in a way that's kind of daring them to like say something or laugh at him. And I don't like, this is like a moment that, like where that's his... a defense mechanism. Oh, and for sure. Should... But also I'm glad that he understands that like after this, I feel like, and they don't even say anything. They don't mm -hmm. tell anybody. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like this, he, it like solidifies like that strong friendship. Yeah. I wish we'd seen yeah. more of this. Like, I wish we'd seen more Neville really. Honestly, I wish we'd see more of all of the things. That I wish are in that the... they would just make a show. Yeah. Verbatim of the book. Yeah, just use. I, I would watch. Like, yeah. It. Yeah. Don't do it. Yeah. I just. I oh, wish girl. that like Neville had become even more of like the fourth one in the group than he did. Like. I know. I know. I don't know. Like I. I, I, I think they do a great job, like in the books, not as great in the movies. Yeah. Um. So. 
Now, Graham then tells him that they should be going, and it was nice to meet his friends, and that he should just throw the wrapper away. His mother has given him enough that he could probably cover all of his walls in his bedroom. And then, like, Harry does notice that, like, Ron just, or not Ron. <laughs> Ron just puts it in his pocket. Neville just puts the wrapper in his pocket. Um, and I had known that there were like, um, like fan theories kind of out in the world about, um, uh, the, the rappers. Correct. Yeah. It's like someone, someone, someone were, like, said that she was writing like messages to him stuff yeah. inside the rappers, but, but I don't, think obviously these are just, that was just like a fan little theory. theories and stuff. Um, I like that theory. Yeah. yeah. Did you see what they posted on Discord? I've read the story mm-hmm. before. It's like Neville goes to tell his mom that he um, oh. wants to propose to Hannah, and she holds uh-huh. out her hand to give him something, and it's it's her like her wedding ring, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of a gum wrapper, she hands him her ring. Yeah, that makes you want to laugh. Oh. Yeah. Um. But I will say, I went there on our lovely website, Flora. Cool. Or the Corolla. Oh, this is a hypable article. Yeah, this is not. I'm looking to see what. Um, there you oh, go. so this is Neville's. Yeah. This is from Hypable. So we'll talk about Cora in a second. Hypable article about seven Harry Potter theories, Deathly Hallows. And this says Neville Longbottom's parents were communicating using gum wrappers. The theory is remember the heart wrenching scene in book five when Harry discovered Neville visiting his catatonic parents. I don't know if I'd say catatonic. Um, I guess, but they're up and walking. Anyways, remember how Alice Longbottom pressed old gum wrappers into his hands and how he kept taking, um, how he kept every single one. So according to this theory, all these wrappers that Neville kept would turn out to be of tantamount importance when it came to defeating Voldemort, because while Frank and Alice's minds might be broken, they were still fragments of information from two once very powerful auras tucked away in there. And Alice was desperately trying to pass this information on to her son. And says so why this didn't happen. This is clearly some plot points are standalone as much as we might have liked for every tiny thing to mean something. There are mounds moments through the series where there is like no other reason than to give us a further insight into to a character in their world. Um, and this is one of them. So I will read on Cora. Um, they asked like, why did Neville's mom always give him gum wrappers? And then this person, um, said, and this is Mark Bodick, Bodnick. Um, and I guess JK Rowling answered this in an interview. I don't know what interview it's from. Uh, um, in 2005, maybe, because it's Akio. Let me see if this is like a still a website. Um, if you guys don't know, Hypable is like. This, the one I'm about like to a say, muggle, this is from, muggle net thing. Oh, Melissa and Ellie. This is from Cora. So the Mark guy, this is from Cora. So. It talks about she was asked, like, what is the significance, if any, of the gum wrappers that Mrs. Longbottom keeps giving Neville? And she says, that was always asked of me. Oh, that was also asked of me this morning. The idea was one of the very few that was inspired by a real event. I was told I was told what to me was a very sad story by someone I knew about their elderly mother who had had who had Alzheimer's and the elderly mother was in a closed ward. She was very severely demented and no longer recognized her son, but he faithfully uh, he went faithfully to visit her twice a week and he used to take her sweets. That was their point of connection. She had a sweet tooth. He recognized him as a sweet giver. That was very poignant to me. So I am embroidered that embroidered the story neville gives his mother what she wants and it makes me sad to think of it and she wants to give him something back to him but what she gives back to him is essentially worthless but he still takes it as as it is worth something because she's trying to trying to give so it does mean something in emotional terms um it's like but the theories on the speed rappers are really out there and then the person's like you can't blame them she goes i mean i'm not trying to pass him I mean, she's not trying to pass some secret messages. Um, and then the person was like, she's not really sane. And she said, no, you're right. But that's a classic, a classic example of let's just shut that one down because it doesn't really lead anywhere. Very interesting, interesting, even if they're wrong. Um, and then the person goes, it's probably one of the most touching moments in the books. And she goes on to say, I think it is important as a character moment. Agreed. Definitely important um, as a character moment. Yeah. 
it just breaks my heart. It's just, you know, it, like, uh, this breaks my heart for poor little Neville. What a roller coaster ride I just this want to give him a hug. Been. No kidding. Right? <laughs> Um, so then the long bottoms have left and Hermione's kind of like the first one to like break the silence. And she's like, goes on to say like, she didn't know about his parents. And then like Ron and Ginny both agree. Like they didn't know either. And then they all looked at Ron and, or, I mean, they all looked at Harry and he's like, no, I knew Dumbledore had told him. Um, so he tells him how like the year before Dumbledore had told him, um, it, like basically Bellatrix and company were sent to Azkaban because of it, but he had promised Dumbledore he wouldn't tell anyone. And then, these are my own words as my mother would say it's not my story to tell um and that's kind of what they do with um later on like they don't tell anyone because it's not their story to tell so then hermione notes that she's shocked that creature has a picture in his den of that woman and i said maybe that's foreshadowing to all the other terrible things she's gonna do with this book and oh, maybe snap. even creature stinks you know oh, what i mean snap. Ooh, because like they're talking you know what i mean like yeah yeah um, and then Lockhart interrupts them because, you know, we've kind of forgotten that he's there and he is not happy and says, look, I didn't learn joined up writing for nothing, you know. And then I told you guys before when Katie mentioned the joined up writing, I looked it up and Google says it's cursive writing. Fun fact. I remember learning cursive in school. Guys, this makes me really sad. And I just. <sighs> hug your people. Yes, indeedy. I want to give. I want to give Harry and Neville a hug. All right, everybody. Matthew Lewis, hug. come to my house so I can hug you. Daniel Radcliffe, come to my house. I'll hug you. Virtual hug right now. Virtual hugs all around. <gasps> Let's. Oh my God. Oh my I want to God. sing the song again now at the oh very end of the God. episode. Fuzzy bear. <laughs> the very end. Yeah, what a okay. pooch. Well, let's get in because I'm like tired. I biked 20 miles today. I'm tired. 20 miles. Lightning bolt round, give me the questions. So, first one. (laughs) Amy Lou asks, who did Mundungus steal the Christmas tree from? (laughs) Oh. Charlie Brown. (laughs) Aw. Excuse me, the who's down in Whoville, Cindy Lou Who. Oh. Yeah, I bet you Brent. he found it like in the garbage or something. Brad Seasley says the Grinch. I would say he, he probably, probably just, just took it from like a tree farm. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. his, or like, you know, someone selling tree like off a like truck. <laughs> yeah. Maybe he just went to a grocery store and just cut one off the top of a car. <laughs> oh, could be. <laughs> you never know. Um, Tiffany can recite the entirety of the Grinch, like the animated version. And I'm not exaggerating or lying when I say that. She truly can. I can. Uh, <laughs> Awkward. Chrissy <laughs> asks, how would the trio dress up for Halloween? For Halloween? Yeah. Um, they'd get a different tie and they'd go as like... Ron would probably be like a Quidditch player, like a pro Quidditch player. He'd be a Chudley oh, can as Quidditch player. Oh, and I like that. Hermione would... Harry would color his hair red and go as a Weasley. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Hermione would be like a teacher. Or would she dress up as like some yeah. historical figure? She Her- would go as a Ooh. librarian. She would go as a muggle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She would uh, dress up as McGee. Yeah. So like that. What's something oh, that yeah, would scare like that. Ron? Like not scare like an ah, but like a oh my god. She maybe would she do- would be <gasps> Princess Diana. She would maybe dress up like Molly. <laughs> Ron would be like, no. Wouldn't that be so funny? Like the morning of, of oh Halloween, he turns around, it's his mom. <laughs> <laughs> um, Vinny asks, what would be the best scene to have your head photoshopped in for no reason? <laughs> Harry in the bubble bath. <laughs> Wait, <say it. laughs> with one of us as Myrtle but you have to make our face be the blue to match the ghost coloring so, or 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 fluffy with the like us as like the three heads and then if there's only one other like one of the students <laughs> uh, okay you know what I mean so yeah. like the three heads and then one of us is like you know what I mean mm-hmm. that would be funny hmm 
Oh, What's one of that? us, one of us on the back of Coral's head. Mm. <laughs> no. Mm-hmm. No. Tiffany, Tiffany in the hat. <laughs> <laughs> Oh gosh! Oh, oh. oh. Happy of like Iggy a... Fozzie and Ted. Yes. Oh, yeah, really... oh, I love that. Dude, me peeping in the window was <laughs> that was <laughs> amazing. We need more so gifts. Good. If yeah. I'm being honest, that was. I don't know what a gif is. You mean a gif? No, I, I mean I a mean, gif. I'll take more peanut there butter. it is. So. There it is. Yeah, I want more peanut butter. <laughs> Just bring bring that up large on the screen for me. <laughs> I want to pause it. <laughs> That's so good, <laughs> guys. Y'all are brilliant. Maggie, someone y'all asked, can say whatever you want, but the man who invented the GIF said that's how you pronounce it. So, oh I'm my gosh, how way. many times are we gonna have this conversation? Hey, if my mom wanted me to be called Sarah, that's what I would expect <laughs> people to pronounce it as. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. hold on. <laughs> what, Katie? Danny what? asked what the black owned candle shop you mentioned during the weekly talk of what it was. <laughs> Book and Reverie. (laughs) Book and Reverie. More me as Dumbledore, please. (laughs) Um, That's so great. terrifying. (laughs) Don't worry about it. Are we ready for the next one? Yes. Um, Maui Potter asks, what is a magical Christmas decoration that you would choose? I love the snow because, like, it probably isn't wet. It probably, like, doesn't melt on you if you, like, walk through it. And it would be so beautiful to just, like, have it throughout your house. Like, I always say snow is super pretty and I enjoy it. I mean, it's beautiful, but I don't like the cold. So if I could have... Snow without the cold? Yeah. Yeah. That'd be awesome. I think I would like... um icicle like real icicle um like ornaments on my tree yeah mm. i think that would be cool. yeah um i i don't i don't know because i love my tree the way it is i'm very particular about decorating it um uh, i don't know maybe like i don't know i don't know i don't know i can't answer floating that. candles <laughs> I would sure. like that. No live fairies. I like thought about that, but I also like, do they want to be there? Cause like, I don't want to yeah. force them to be like hanging out on like, my Christmas tree if they don't want to be there, you know? What yeah. about Ooh, wizard crackers? With, with us, wizard yeah. crackers. That's what I want. I like wizard that. crackers. Yeah. yeah. Cause regular crackers are fun, but can you imagine like real wizard ones? I want these, g- our, our heads as ornaments. Oh my God. Yeah. You yeah. should be able to buy that. <laughs> <laughs> everybody everybody wear my stupid hat <laughs> yes imagine that on your tree oh my god a pop socket <laughs> <laughs> if pop sockets weren't so dang expensive to produce i would make them but they're so expensive yeah they are. you have to buy so many like 500 minimum it's ridiculous yeah all right Sydney asks, what is your favorite Christmas gift that you have ever received or given? Um, I feel like this is always a hard one. It is. I always yeah, have a hard time, like, thinking back. A Christmas gift. Marty and I always get each other, like, video games. I'm like the worst because, like, I literally don't, like, I don't know. It's, 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 I don't know. I mean, one year we got my we got like a cruise that we went on. Oh yeah, that was like, great. I, I'm more of like a experiences over things. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And whilst, I mean, I had fun on the cruise. You remember it? <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna sound terrible. I say this every time I talk about it. I was gonna say I would have probably had more fun if I was with other people. Oh, I wouldn't. I didn't say that. <laughs> but like I, I said I had a good time but I would never do it again <laughs> correct not that I would never do it again I I love my family I do it's just that like 
So I was like in a room with my sister and her and I have like different ideas of what's fun to do on vacation. Like, and we don't really have a great way of communicating on the boat, but it was fun. Like the best part was Cozumel. And then we had, we went to a tequila fact, not factory. It wasn't a factory, but, um, we got to taste it. That was, that was some good tequila. Yeah. Yeah. (sighs) So that was pretty good. I'm trying to think of like anything else. Like even if I've given gifts, I don't know. Am I a good gift giver? I don't know. Yeah. You're all right. Eh. <laughs> I like I like giving people gifts more yeah. so than getting them. I don't know. I'm like trying to think. I love any time I get like an experience. That's always my my favorite type of gift. I just like I'm really I really am trying hard to stop being so immersed in like wanting things I just Mm -hmm. like I've realized that my anxiety stems from unorganization and like not knowing where to put things that I have or like feeling overcrowded like I have too many things um so I really want to try to like focus and and tell people like if you're ever going to get me a gift for anything like I don't really want an item you know, like I just I like my favorite thing, like um, our good friend Chris got Katie and I tickets to go see Aladdin in New York for Christmas one year. Like that was really cool. Mm-hmm. I really enjoyed the when we were preparing to go over to the UK, mm-hmm. like we spent me and Meg like any holiday passing between the time we like started really planning. And we saving. planned for like a year and a half. So all yeah. the holidays that landed holidays, between birthdays. We bought something for, for this that trip. trip. So it was either like the luggage we were going to use because we didn't have our own luggage or like an experience we knew we were going to do over there. And it was kind of like, like for our anniversary, I got us the train tickets for yeah. the Hogwarts Express. Yeah. Yeah. That was probably one of my favorite years of gifts. Yeah, that was pretty cool. And it's like one stuff you're going to use or two something you mm. really want to experience yeah like one gift was tickets to the london zoo yeah yeah like that yeah that kind of stuff yeah um there's so many really good questions so let's power <laughs> through these because i want to do quite a few um to kendra and sammy both asked what would you have given the trio for christmas uh-huh. um um, I think Ron maybe like some new Quidditch gear because he's like on the team now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like help like him. Gloves. Yeah. Like keeper gloves. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good idea. Um. Um. I don't know. I think Harry's gift from Sirius and yeah, that was good. Lupin are pretty perfect. Mm-hmm. Um. Or like a sneakoscope or some some like darker. Yeah, something defense for defense. Thing. Maybe yeah. something to help him relax. Yeah. Mm, um, he needs Hermione, that. I would have just gotten her a bunch of bath bombs and a candle. I feel like a for bath sure. bomb would mean something different in the wizarding world. Go chill. Um, <laughs> I would give Hermione something like cozy, maybe like a little book nook or something. You know what I mean? Like a nice blanket and like a, cute a reading pillow mark or something. Yeah. yeah. And then Ron, maybe. <laughs> snacks and the blanket i don't know definitely snacks for ron um katie do you want to add anything i mean i do but i can't think of anything (laughs) it's okay um let's see um nope rope asks what do you think neville does with the gum wrappers his mom gives him Saves every single one of them, I guarantee it. I think they might be, like, put in a little box. Mm -hmm. That's what I was going to say. He just keeps them in a little space, you know, that he can keep to himself. Like, does anybody have, like, like, a a memory box? box. Like, we have a a memory box that's in our closet that's just, like, random things that we've collected um, that we, like, I mean, it's not really anything I'm going to ever put on display, but, you know, every once in a while you just want to, like, open that box and go through it, and it makes you feel happy. I have a I box. Have notes from high school. I have a, I have a box <laughs> with like cards and movie ticket stubs and stuff like that from yeah. when Marty and I first started dating. I have notes. So uh, we were. 
I was friends with these girls I'm no longer friends with in high school. And like we gave each other stupid nicknames and I forget why, but mine was Ace. Again, I don't, I literally don't remember when the other girls, her nickname, do you remember, I, were you a part of this ever, Megan? I think. Ace? Yeah. No, I was, I was but Ace. I don't remember what mine was. Mm-hmm. I don't remember what yours I was, but. What? It was Dewey. It was Dewey. <laughs> I don't know why I remember that. <laughs> so it was Ace, too, because it stood for something, didn't it? Yeah, but because I don't know what. Lisa's was Utters. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember what Gabby's was, but. We're um, so weird. God, we're so weird. But there's still, I still have like a bunch of letters. And I'm like, well, what? I don't want to throw them out. Like, I know. I feel that. Whatever. I still have them. And they're like, we folded them up, right? You remember? Yeah. Like, perfectly like a square. Some of them are little like football shapes. <laughs> yeah. And mine say ace on them all. We are so weird. Yeah. <laughs> I also, actually, I just went through all of my t shirts the other day because I wanted to like rearrange them in the drawer and I, I'm really truly as I say this as I'm wearing a t-shirt I don't really wear a ton of t-shirts like out in the real world um and I was like going through them because now I have an absorbent amount of, I was like I just have a lot of Swiss shirts that I'm like well I can't through my Swiss shirts I like do wear those for like things out in public and I have some Harry Potter shirts I have some Star Wars but not that much and then I have shirts from like my freshman year of college when I joined a sorority and I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't want to get rid of those shirts, but I'm like, I'm never going to wear them again. Yeah. But I also don't want to get rid of them. I, I have like t-shirts just... from all like the sports teams I was on and it's like, and all the championship games that we like had, like the tournaments we went to and it's like, what am I going to do with these? But I can't get rid of them. I literally have I a shirt from my freshman so year of Magnifica. I got so The only one I have I is many. the one, so they would, I think, I don't know if they still do this, but like every year, like, they had four colors and it might be the same colors of Hogwarts. I don't remember, but like they just would like um, when we entered school, our our color for our year was red. So like they gave you a red T-shirt, which has like the the emblem of like our high school. And then the whole saying, like from the outside looking in, you can never understand it from the inside looking out. You can never explain it. Um, and they gave it to us our freshman year, and I still have that same shirt, which I'm like, I'm not going to get rid of you. Yeah. I'm like, am I ever really going to wear you again? I might. I don't know. I just got rid of it. <laughs> no, still have Donated it. it. Let's talk about the fact, hold on, that I've had in my room since we graduated in 2008, Our, I think it was Alex that did this, right? She printed out like a maybe five by seven picture, and it's of me, Megan, and her on our graduation date. I did gave, that. It's did, from <laughs> me. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to call Alex and see if, she, if you're just saying that you're the one that No, because I gave her the same thing. <laughs> so, it, and it, it, she, so allegedly Megan gave it to us. So it's a did. five by seven picture of us. And it came, she put it on um, like a picture holder that was like the year 2008 with like a little cap on it. Um, and they literally, it has been up in my room with the picture, like on display <laughs> since we've graduated in 2008. And I was like, yeah, I think I'm going to like put it away now. I did. I will say it did break like a little corner of the hat chipped off like forever ago. And <laughs> Megan was so offended. She goes, I can't believe that you would put that away. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> she doesn't even own it anymore. I don't know. I'm like, it. so I'm the only good friend that has had this up <laughs> for 12 I just years. Redid, I just redid our frames for our apartment, though, and you guys are featured quite a lot. So I'm just saying. I mean, you're 12 hanging, years. You're hanging in our houses just in a different photo. It doesn't look like I'm a weird child with bad acne in a white <laughs> gown and or, hat. <laughs> you chose to make your hair look like that. Yeah. Me. Yeah, I know. That was a bad decision. <laughs> All right, I want to go on to the next question. Yeah. Um, Runo Waslib, what is Neville's love language, do we think? Words of affirmation. Yes, I agree acts with that. Acts of service. Mm-hmm. Do you think acts of service? He does acts of service all the time. You usually love the way that you want to be loved. I See, but I don't know if that's true for me. I love giving gifts, but I don't it makes me a little uncomfortable to receive them sometimes. You know what I mean? Like, I don't need that in my life. Enjoy your pins. I mean, I don't, it's not that I don't, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't need that. Like, and I, I love to like feed people, but I don't need people to feed me. Cause I want, I want, you oh, know what I'll mean? feed you. Like, 
that's the one way I show my love is by like giving to other people. Well, you're an outlier then. I don't know what my other love languages are, so. I also don't like words of affirmation. Like, I, please don't tell me. Like, I don't like when people are like, You're good so- morning, beautiful. Like, it, I, morning, I don't like beautiful. that. I don't like that. That's probably why I'm single. You're like so hot. You don't have any love language. Yeah, I'm loveless. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I don't know what mine is. Mine is touch and words of affirmation but i know touch is like number one i would say for me mine's probably touch it's a book that you take a test in i don't know um next question isaiah asks do wizards have health care i feel like they do that's my opinion i think that there's something uh, I universal wizard I, care. I don't know. <laughs> Wiz care. Wiz care. Wiz care instead of Obamacare. Wiz care, 2020. <laughs> it's like fudge care. <laughs> fudge care. <laughs> That'd be terrible. <laughs> no, I, it had to have been, it had to have been put together way before fudge. So like True. somebody else's True. last name care. Right. Well, maybe it'll Why are you change looking at that? shackable care. Shacklebolt care. I don't know care. how to love you. Looks um, like being uncomfortable. Wiz wellness. You said you were going to hug me like today that. and you haven't. Well, the day's not over. <laughs> Two more questions. Samantha oh. asks, do you think that if someone used legitimacy, someone may be able to find Alice and Frank within their minds? Oh. I don't I think, I, I don't think, think they... that they're too far gone, but that might be true for like other cases. Maybe. I, think I feel like at this point they would have tried that. Do you I think, agree. Like looking into their minds, they could almost see thoughts or memories, but maybe they're kind of like blurry. I would think that maybe mm-hmm. like if somebody did legitimacy, that person may be able to see, but that doesn't mean that it would help Alice and Frank in any way. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I'm doing legitimacy on Alice. I may be able to see but Alice's exactly. memories, but that doesn't mean anything for Alice's recovery. Yeah. You know. That's kind of. But I also wonder. So, like, w- with the Cruciatus curse, like, I wonder if it physically alters your mind. Yeah, like muddles it to the to to the point where even if I was doing legitimacy, like, I also wouldn't be able to see into your head, like, see. You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But maybe that process, if it works, could tell. Like, yeah, this person has a chance to recover this person has Mm. a lesser chance to recover yeah like it helps diagnose yeah i like that and maybe like they did that and just realized that there really is nothing that they can do to help them unfortunately we don't even know if this happens i know but we're sad about it (laughs) um last question is mia can you guess the theme of tonight's shenanigans i have a guess does anybody else have a guess i'm thrown off well, Mia's name is Mia Georgilli, so I'm guessing she's like George Weasley. But then we have Carly, Carly Riss, that's serious. And then and they're the, the Marauders the and the Weasley twins, oh. so they're like throwing mischief. I love it. Is that, am I right? Is that right? Oh Vinny, you're just Vinny because you're always a troublemaker. <laughs> I'm catching up to the chat, am I right? They call me pranksters. I I literally have been watching so much mean or mean girls. What? (laughs) New girl. New girl. Wait, yeah, Vinny, I don't know what yours. Oh, serious. Okay. It's just serious. Yeah. I mean, yeah. (laughs) Okay. Oh, yeah. And then Brandon was Brad Seasley. So I'm like, oh, Fred, George. And then I there was serious Remus. So I was like, yeah, they're just mischief makers. Awesome. <laughs> Brandon and his name carried on from last week's bread theme. I like it. I like, I like bread. Dude, I love bread. <sighs> is that all? That is all I've got. Let's all go right. to the fan story. Give me a fan story. story. All right, this one comes from Luce. My name is Luce. Pronounced Luce as in Footloose. It's spelled L-O-E-S. So I'm glad because I've mm-hmm. seen your name often, and I always pronounced it Lose, which I thought was cool. But now I'm glad that I can actually pronounce your name properly. 
and I'm a new follower of your podcast. I'm originally from Belgium, where I started reading the books in Dutch as a little girl. When the fourth book came out, I couldn't wait for the Dutch translation version to come out, as it took about six months and bought the English version. Luckily, by that time, I'd learned enough English from watching The Simpsons to understand most things. That's epic. Although at first the names really confused me, as most of them are translated in the Dutch books. I remember thinking, who is this Dumbledore? Who is this Hobbes? <laughs> I've been a fan all that time. My sister and I went to loads of midnight releases of both books and movies. When I was 15, my mom took my sister, then, thir then 13, and me to Australia on a holiday. Before we left, the Prisoner of Azkaban movie came out, and we watched it once before we left, and four times during our trip. Like, that's exactly something we would do. Yep. I remember seeing it in an ancient movie movie theater, as well as in Beach Chairs Under the Stars. Awesome. <laughs> when we got back, we watched it once more in a Belgian cinema, and I will never forget this. During this trip, I fell in love with Australia, and just over a year ago, my boyfriend and I finally migrated to Melbourne. That's awesome. That's, That's awesome. Super cool. I feel so lucky that in the short amount of time we've been here, I've got to see both the Puffs play and the Cursed Child. I also luckily oh, nice. have one good friend here who also loves Harry Potter, who I can count on to go to these things with me. Moving to a new country is not easy, and the hardest thing is making new friends. But listening to you guys chattering away makes me feel like I'm surrounded by friends again, and for that I'm so grateful. You guys share my love for not only Harry Potter, but also cats, Gilmore Girls, Disney, and food. So I just love everything you guys talk about. <laughs> I've only started listening to the podcast at the beginning of this month, and I'm already up to episode 49. I ride my bike to work four times a week, 40 minutes each way, and listen Whoa. to it then. Whew. Whilst cooking, baking, sewing, showering, anytime I can, really. I'm putting off becoming a patron because then I will never catch up, so I'll do that when I have to wait for the new episode. <laughs> And she has, so thank you very much for supporting us. Hmm. Sorry for this being long and probably not that interesting, but I just wanted to thank you for making me feel like I've got some friends here. It's not long, it's very interesting. P.S. I'm a super proud Hufflepuff. My Ilva Morty house is horned serpent. My Patronus is a salmon, which I learned That's to That's super accept. cool. Yeah. That is cool. I, this sounds bad. I love to eat salmon. <laughs> Gosh. And my one cool is fish. wood with a dragon heart. Heart string core, ten and a quarter inches, and quite bendy flexibility. Thank you so much. Thank you, Luce. Thank you, thank, thank you, thank you, thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Um, and before Katie goes on to tell a joke, I just wanted to tell you all that I took the singles quiz for the love language, and mine is quality time. What is singles mm -hmm. quiz? It's like, because it gave you options like, are you a kid, are you a teen, are you in a couple, or are you a single person? Uh, so I oh, I like that. One. That's cool. Um, it and it says 40% is quality time and then words of affirmation, acts of service, both are 20%. Then it's 17% is physical touch and literally receiving gifts is 3%. Um, <laughs> but I would agree. Like, I think I would agree that quality time, like, I don't need, I don't, I don't know. I'm low maintenance. I just want to spend time with you. Thanks. Yeah. Ready for a joke? Tell me a joke. Okay. You ready? Yes. What did the Thunderbird say to Newt's commander? I don't know, Katie. What? Can I be frank with you? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I love it. Um, you can find us on social media on Facebook at Swish and Flick Podcast and on Twitter and Instagram at Swish Flick Cast. You can follow your hosts. Myself and Katie are on Twitter at the and Instagram at the Peters family and Tiffany is on Twitter and Instagram at Tiff swish underscore flick. Sarah is also on Instagram at O Mally with three H's. Um, we love doing stories on Instagram and sometimes go live before episodes. So make sure that you turn on alerts for us so that you can join in on the fun. If you love our podcast and want to support us um, and be a part of our patreon community you can head on over to patreon.com forward slash swish flick cast and choose your level it give you gives you access to our legitimately amazing discord channel um our felix files episodes we do um bi yearly i guess boxes where you get special like exclusive merch along with extra merch 
<laughs> basically like they're themed struggling get through through this. i am struggling <laughs> i'm i am struggling hard i love you so much <laughs> um yeah so Anyway, they're, the boxes are themed. They're super fun. Um, and head in on order, over to Patreon if you would like in to. Order to get the next box, which comes out in January, you have to be signed up by October. Yes. Um, end of October through January. Yes. So if you aren't, you don't get a box. Yes. So. And then yes, yes, yes. Phoenix Plus level. Phoenix Plus. Cool, guys. Tiffany. (laughs) That's great. What's up? What's up with me? What's poppin'? Well, I switched my workout up because it wasn't sparking joy. Don't mind me just watching. And I'm really sore. But I'm back to like... I too am sore. Lifting heavy again with one cardio day. Are you lifting bud heavy? No, I don't enjoy that. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> I think I'm delirious. I'm so tired. I got the new Kindle Paper White, and I really like that. It's so light, and it's very Is it smooth. paper light? It's paper light. Paper <laughs> white, paper light. No, but I really like it. And um, so I downloaded. I'm getting into very, like, spooky books because it's that time of year so i downloaded that it was like three dollars um the house of the seven gables so i started reading that last night isn't that the house that we went to go see it is and we didn't and we did it and remember megan we just stood by the ocean yeah <laughs> stood by we were the like ocean. oh look it's super rainy cold and there's the ocean <laughs> that i don't want to go in right now <laughs> i would have i would have put my feet in there I think there was a fence. Correct. That's why I didn't. <laughs> I probably would have. Um, I'd so, like to go again when it's not cold and rainy and I would see that house on a different day when my hip wasn't hurting me. Yeah. You're so old. I know. And yeah, so I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to be reading The Crucible also coming up in October with my sister. She also bought a copy off of Amazon and it said used good shape and she opened it and there was somebody who took notes and drew lines and underlined What the heck, all- man? over it and she's like this is not good shape so she's like (laughs) returning it she's like i don't even know what in the world this is about but anywho um started uh back to work with kids all i'm going to say about that is that it is it's going um yeah it's a different time but loving how um lady supreme's personality is absolutely blossoming and exploding and her pretend play is off the charts and i have never been so so proud can we talk about how stinking cute she was when she facetimed us at animal kingdom it was so about your ears oh my gosh okay i had on my Animal Kingdom ears, as I call them, because every time I wear them, I wear them when we're going to Animal Kingdom because they have draft print all over them. And I'm on FaceTime with Alana and Tiffany's like, look at May's ears. And I'm like, yeah, Alana, can you see the pattern? And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, what animal is that? And she said draft. And like both me and Tiffany, like our jaws just dropped. I'm like, oh my God, you're so smart. She's so, she is so incredibly bright and so funny. Yeah. She's so, so funny. funny. She was <laughs> like, may, 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 may. <laughs> oh, she's I so I love funny. that sh- when she toots now, she's like, I tooted. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well, what do you say? Excuse me. But I got her a little stuffed zero from Nightmare Before Christmas, and I couldn't wait to give it to her, so she got that today. And she also got the Binks. Bridget got her Binks. Oh. And even though she hates that movie because she doesn't like those witches, those bad witches, she says. Um, she loves cats, but she's never gonna have one poor kid (laughs) she can come see Iggy Um, and Teddy yeah she can come see but I just got done visiting my family so that was really nice got to visit with my grandma and watch my nieces and my nephew 
and them all play together and it was really amazing and we picked pumpkins because my sister has a huge farm if you will did you hear what alana said so my dad asked her my mom or did one of them asked her if they picked pumpkins she's like no he goes well where are they he goes well they're in the car yeah but no she didn't go <laughs> pick they were in the she car she did not pick pumpkins she was like so excited maybe i can play the audio after this of her talking about being in the pumpkin patch and she fed a turkey you guys oh, so cute. she fed turkey lurkey and she didn't like freak out or is that anything. what your sister like the kid's name the, the turkey yeah that's its name turkey his name is turkey lurkey. lurkey and if you tell him oh you a big turkey it puffs up and struts and his like he gets all red it's so funny he's like the cutest ugliest thing ever <laughs> And I'm done. I have more to say, but I'm done. Um, Katie? It's just been exciting lately. <laughs> yeah. No, that's good. Um, well, I got to FaceTime with Alana at Animal Kingdom. That was fun. I got to show her <laughs> the Tree of Life. Mm-hmm. And we had literally the best Animal Kingdom day, like, oh, man. literally so ever. We heard a lion roar for the first time. I'd never heard a lion roar. And we, like, the car that we were in on the safari, we were about to leave where the lions are. But then the lion started roaring, so our driver, like, stopped. And I'm just so happy that she stopped and, like, let us just continue to listen because it was just, like, going on. Oh my god, it was just so amazing. It was literally magical. It was so amazing. It was so cool. And also, there was an Ancoli cattle that literally, I mean, had I been a bad human being, I could have reached out and touched it. Like, that's how close it was. And then, also, there were white rhinos that were literally right next to, um, literally right next to it, too. And uh, it was just, it was so it was such a good safari. And then on top of that, like, it was just, it was just a good day. We got uh, some spooky treats and had a good time. Mm. It was really Did good. Did you guys see in the chat that Caitlin, I think, said, or someone said that they their cousin has a chicken named Cluck Norris? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So funny. Um, and then... Yeah, Katie and I have just we've we've actually we've been trying to lay out like our weekly plans so that we know like what our days are going to look like with like what we want to try to put out every week. And I'm just excited. I feel motivated as ever to like be a content creator and just like go the go the full mile and just like go all in. I just want to. I just want to. I just. I feel like you put like two songs into one. Yeah, Yeah, she did. And Hercules together. Uh huh. Uh huh. She did. Sorry. No, it's. I'm. I can go the distance (laughs) to defeat (laughs) the Huns. I can go most (sighs) anywhere to defeat the Huns. Marty's going to text me and be like, tell my sister. Yeah, it is. Stop singing. We also rode the ride Dinosaur, and it scared the crud out of me. And it does every time. And I've been on it a million times, but that dang dinosaur that runs at me just like, I scream. And I can't even help it. It's a Carnotaurus. A Carnotaurus. It's terrifying. And... I'm just saying Disney during the week is so nice and quiet and I just love it. I just love it. Mm-hmm. Also, Morgan is in town this weekend and I'm so excited. We're going to go hang out with her at Universal tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Have fun. So I'm excited to see her and meet her husband. Mm-hmm. Yep. Woo-hoo. What am I doing? Working out with Tiff. Uh, every morning. Every morning. <laughs> Bright and early. I wake up before mm-hmm. the sun. Um, my next book I want to read is, was it Boy Erased? Mm. Um, I'm about to start JVN's book. That's my next, that's Wait, the next on my list. What's Boy Erased about? I'm not really sure. Oh, okay. I think, I think Meg said it had to do with 
um, why am I blanking? Like I'll look it up. up but I'm excited. I keep saying, I'm going to read tonight. I'm going to read tonight. And then I either get like super tired or I get derailed to do something else. But Gay conversion therapy. There we go. Um. Um, but I know nothing about it other than that. So it's supposed to be really good. Doing that. Um, and we just unpacked our last box, like maybe one or two days ago. So we're officially like moved in officially. Wow, way to go. We never even finished unpacking at our other place. So this is a huge feat for us. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I was talking to our friends, Regine and Kelly, this afternoon, and we told Regine, we're like, we unpacked the last box, and she's like, oh my god, that's such, like, a good feeling, because you guys never even unpacked at your old place, and I'm like, tell me about it. The only time that place was clean and somewhat put together was whenever you came to visit. <laughs> And it was because I told you not to look in the closets, because that's where everything was shoved. <laughs> <laughs> But that's about it. Um, I've been doing school. I'm real tired, so I'm sorry that I sound tired. I've been doing school. Uh, school, work, and biking. And on a stationary bike, I did 20 miles today, which is the longest I've ever ridden. So this week alone, I did 40 miles. Um, yeah, that's literally me. <laughs> Uh, school's fine. Work is fine. I'm ready for fall weather because I'm sick of hot weather. And that's about it. I'm no longer blonde. <laughs> I have red hair. And that's it. I literally have nothing going on. Hopefully this weekend I'll get some things done. But Oh, it's my friend's first wedding anniversary this weekend. So that's fun for them. They survived. Yeah. That's Tiffany, that's look it. at you, a stumbled <laughs> you I love Sarah? how you left the wrinkly forehead. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sarah, I'm coming you? in. Coming I in to open. Wait, well, I didn't Please see Sarah. Me. Where is it? Oh, I'm Fozzie. <laughs> Truly is me. And all I can think about is it's 20 after 10. I still have to like save the episode, upload it. And then go home just to come back in the morning to watch my knees. Should have slept over. I want to give my weekly PSA time. to everybody to uh, watch Shoots Creek. Yeah. You know, just got to throw hey, it out also, there. Also, there's a poll on our Patreon. Go fill it out if you haven't filled it out yet. Yeah. Go vote on where we should donate money to, please. And And don't <laughs> forget to vote. Vote, 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 vote. How many days till the election? I don't know. <sighs> Too many. Vote. Yeah. I got a cute purple apron for when Tiffany and I cook. Woo woo. Yeah. I'm excited <laughs> to finish that vlog because what I've worked on so far has had me laugh out loud multiple times, so. It was fun to make. I was telling her today, so we made the butterscotch for it. And then I put it a couple days later on ice cream. And it's a little too salty, so... It will be tweaked. Yeah, the whole thing is going to be tweaked. Yeah. All right. She says she sounds miserable. <laughs> it was fun. We're making Frozen next. Woo -woo. Thank you for this absolutely uh, wild ride. And yeah what is this for 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 <laughs> gifs and gifs i was gonna say for giggles and googles i don't know okay <laughs> that concludes this week's episode thank you so much for listening and don't let the muggles get you down <gasps> amazing just in my voice <laughs> Best thing of two to my turn. You look like a floating head. Oh.
Uh, am I like just added in or is that like something I don't Oh, I'm Hagrid. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't remember did who's you... in the back. I couldn't see. It did just you think like the flying nun in my face? You, you know really I mean? do like the flying nun. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> Come on, not get so I was uh, like, oh, this sounds so legit and hilarious. How did I not remember this? Because <laughs> I never have it. You know, this episode is <laughs> Oh, gosh. Oh, that's a good one.